What's up, everybody? Let me know if you can hear me. Going live with a, a friend of mine, David Delmar Coach. So, David, if you're watching, go ahead and send me that invite, brother, and I will invite you in to the stream. Want to say what's up to everybody hanging out with us live, everybody watching this or listening to this on the replay. What's up to you? Um, feel free to ask questions. Feel free to share this out. And uh, yeah, want to go ahead and plug my uh, my Patreon as well. That's how you can support my work. Link in with me. Get access to my Discord. All my guided meditations, my music. Um, Thursday night hangouts, Sunday morning hangouts, meditation, breath work, discussion, all that cool stuff. So if you're looking for community, make sure that you um, tap in. We got some cool people and uh, got a lot of cool friends. That's where all my friends are. Let me know in the comment section if you can hear me. I am wearing my earpiece. I don't know how I sound. Let me know if you can hear me. What's up, Ryan? From New York. What to do, what to do. David Delmar Coach, brother, if you see this, send me the invite to join. I wanted to do this outside instead of cooped up in my office. So, I'm chilling outside. Good morning, Trace. Everyone out there, make sure you click like and make sure you, you uh, click share too um, while we're live. It'll send it out to more people. Let's see. What's up, Jose? What to do? What to do? Invite. Let's see. You should be able to request, David. Where Where am I? I'm in my backyard in Alabama. I am in Alabama. Roll Tide. Roseanne, how are you? It says blessings from Scotland. Blessings. What's up, Amy? Trace, Trace, Tracy, sound check. Good, thank you, thank you, thank you. Rolling sound check is what they call it. A rolling sound check. Do it on the spot. I used to hate those when I did a lot of concerts. We want to do a sound check before. No, just get there, it's gonna be good. And you get there and it's bad. And you're on stage, it's like, I can't hear myself and nobody can hear me. Rolling sound check, not good, not good. But you always want to make friends with the, uh, with the sound men because they can either make or break you. And a lot of those guys, man, they'll do it on purpose. That's crazy. David, if you see this, brother, make sure you send me the invite. I'm sitting here looking at the uh, invites. Rian, hey, brother. I can't wait to connect with you, man. I love your story, man. I love your energy. Many blessings to you, bro. I want to connect with you and, and support you any way I can, man. So cool. Love your story, brother. Changing lives out here, man. Changing the narrative. Making it making an impact, bro. And and don't even know it. I know you know it. That's what gives you the strength to keep on moving. That's what gives me the strength. The impact, man. One person's life that you can change and knowing that you've already changed so many people. Come on, man. So powerful. Good stuff. Good stuff. Y'all make sure y'all go follow his page too, Rian. If you haven't heard his testimony, I've shared it, and uh, it's really good. He's uh, in love with Jesus, encountered the love of Christ, changed his life, and uh, he's a warrior for the light and love and beauty. Uh, Kieran says, oh, the Satanist to Christian? Satanist to Jesus he probably would prefer because the, the Christian name carries so much baggage that doesn't that that Christ or Christ doesn't carry so and you guys know how that is that's nothing new that's nothing new so a lot of people don't even want to be called a Christian um, just because it implies so much that it shouldn't or really doesn't that Jesus didn't imply and um, but I, I hold on to it just because Christ is my my foundation he is the rock of my salvation and uh, he is love personified in a person that revealed himself to me and introduced me to the creator. And I hold on to that. He's my cornerstone. He's the head. He's everything. 
So I would never want to let that go. And I want to represent Christ, represent him to people because he's been presented in such a bad light. That's not conducive to his character at all. At least not <laughs> the one I've encountered. And they said, well, you've encountered a false Christ, a new age Christ. Is Christ divided? Is there more than one? No, not by any means. Christ is love. Christ is light. Christ is the anointing. Christ is the healer. He's the savior. All things beautiful is wrapped up in him. Anything you need, anything hidden, kept away from you is in him. Provision in him, in it. But it was personified to us in, this, in, the, in the personification of Jesus. Yeah, he carried, he made himself a, an instrument for love. And his children will do that as well, because if, if not, you're not his children. He tells you that straight up. I didn't know you. I don't know you. But we did the same things you did outwardly. We did it for selfish reasons. You know? So that's what I want to represent. There's my little birds. I don't know if y'all can see them in the back. Fuzzy. Come here, Fuzzy. They, they left. I love being outside now, connecting with the ground, putting my butt on the ground. Um, it's big, putting my feet on the ground is big, but putting your butt on the ground, I think it's big too. So I'm just waiting for my, my guests to join. Y'all tag him, David Delmar Coates, make sure he gets the, the invite. But I guess we got time for a question before he, he, he joins. I want to hear his story and his relationship with Christ and God. Elizabeth says, Hi, True Seeker. You are such an inspiration to my wiring. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. You're very much welcome. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing wiring is that wire yeah wiring yeah thank you i'm in love with the description of the messiah yahweh shah you're on tomorrow is feast of pentecost mm. Mm. that's funny you say you're on er on you say you're, er on, tomorrow, the Feast of Pentecost. The word er in the Bible means light, means sun, means the, peop the, the beings who dwell in the light. And you say er on, on is light, Our er on, Aaron. Aaron's name means light, he's a carrier of light. Air er is the bringer, the air. Er. And on is light, the sun. Saul am um, on. Air on. You turn the light switch on. Let there be light. It's coming on, bringing light into the darkness. Ur, which is where Abraham was from, and all of his descendants came from the light. They are children of the light. That's what Jesus says, right, Sarah? Yeah. Children of the light. Children of the day. From the land of Ur. I love, man, etymology and, and breaking down words. It's been so fun. I get lost in it. I can't read the Bible without getting lost in it anymore. Getting lost to do what? To find myself. Flint, Flintly, this is my first time being in, in, in your nice. Awesome. Thank you, Yolanda, for the stars. Uh, Jonathan says, D looking like a sage. <laughs> Love you, brother. Have you done, Matthew says, have you done any videos on the law of attraction? What's your perspective on it? Um, I guess I touched on it in my, in my book a little bit. Um, but, uh, we've done a little bit on it, like, um, connecting with universal law, like the laws that govern our universe 
Not just that, because everything has a law. Everything has commandments. So connecting with the laws of the universe, universal law, is the law of attraction. Polarities, positive and negative, right? If you're attracting something, what about the laws of repulsion and the laws of how to repel something? Let's teach on that too. They, they go hand in hand. Um, everything has its... Every, every like attracts like. It's just, it's just how it is. So it, it could be very, very easily understood with, with the law of attraction just to literally focus on what you want. Don't overemphasize. Don't worship what you want. Put it out there. Program your mind. Speak it into existence. We have so many tools within our our body, our universe. You have the laws of the universe, and then you have the laws that govern your, your universe. And if your universe is governed by those laws, which is what Christ is, if you read uh, Matthew and Luke, it says that Christ is going to be a governor, and the government will be upon his shoulders. So he teaches you how to govern, how to govern your body, how to govern your love, how to govern your energy, how to govern your thoughts. He's a he's a good governor. He's a righteous governor. You know, we, we our examples of even that word is like bad governors. You know, we know all the bad ones, but we don't know the good ones. So um, there's laws that that govern. There's laws that keep. You know, the commandments. Every being has a commandment. The the birds have their commandment, and they keep it well. You know, the insects have their commandment, and they do it really good. Someone asked me about mushrooms and Christians and mushrooms, and, and, and they have their, their commandments, and they do what they do really good. They're teachers, and they're, they're, they're programmed to do something. It's in their DNA, and they do only that. They do only that, and when you use it outside of its created purpose, that's when you get into what is called in the Bible an abomination. It wasn't supposed to be used that way. Why are you doing this with that thing? Why are you abusing it? Why are you doing this? Why are my children who are supposed to be dancing and playing in the sun, why are they cooped up sitting at a desk in a cubicle for 8, 10, 12 hours a day? They're not, they're, why are you doing this to them? They're in captivity. They weren't created to do that. So you get with the governor and govern yourself how can I get out of this bondage I'm yo I'm unequally yoked with what a job most of us are to do what keep the lights on lights are free you got 12 hours at least of, of light this is natural natural law it's the, the this is the law of the Sun it's going to be there every day for so so many times it's gonna do what it does it's gonna give its life it's gonna grow it's gonna give increase it's gonna do so much everything has a commandment a service all of the angels essentially everything would would be an angel because the spirit of the, or the essence of it is angelic it's a messenger it's programmed with the message you are too. I mean, that's why in the New Testament, Paul was called an, an angel. And there's so many times where it goes back and forth using the word angel and men. Should we even go here? Using the word angel and men. Because the angels were men, at least what we thought were men. They weren't, they weren't mortals. But the word man or men, you have to go to the Hebrew to see the context because you'll have the word man for, that I know three let's just say three times probably way more but three three different times you have ish and ish which is a god or an angel in the beginning that was the first beings that were created and then they had servants that were created to them that would keep the land and they were programmed to do certain things. Yeah, the Anunnaki stuff, there's some of that, a lot of truth to that. But they missed so much. Yeah, there were beings created to till the ground, to mine gold. That's all they want. They, they delighted in that. It's in their very DNA. 
If you had them dancing and singing, that's not what they're created to do. They, they want to dig. They want to dig in the ground and they want to keep and they want to cut trees. This is God created all of these, these beings to do this. That would serve the Elohim. They would serve the Elohim. And it wasn't until that order got out of order, started changing things and making the, mixing them, and it wasn't supposed to be mixed. So going back to man, when you read the word man in the Bible, listen, I urge you, if you want understanding, like there's a simple understanding for sure, the precepts are very moral, you know, the moral code and conduct and this become love and you know, overcome that sinful fleshly nature that we all have because we've been mixed with it. We've all, we're also mixed with that. Where is it at? Right up that way. We've been mixed with the sun. What did we say, Ur? The city of the sun. Heliopolis, city of the sun. Helios, that's where Jesus' father was from. Helios tells you that in the book of Matthew. Sun light mixed with dirt you got to have a body but we're mixed with other things we're mixed with a nefesh which is a, the soul of the animals it's in us it's in our skin we have we have the soul we have the soil of the earth of arets erets which is another those beings from the soil they're called men It'll say men. It's, I don't think it should say men. The men just simply means humanoid. But if you look up the Hebrew word that's used, it'll say, it'll say Eretz, Eretz. It'll say Adam, Adama, Adawam, which means ruddy and from the soil. And then you also have the Ish, which any time that, that those who came from, who were an original man, an original governor, it, it, it's used to say their name. And but, but when we read it in English, all we're going to get is man. That's why it says, the Lord said to my Lord. Who is that? Who is the Lord? Who is my Lord? These are the, the Lord's talking. There's only one. There's one God. Yeah, that's what, it all comes out of the one. The most high, the, the, the all inclusive. The all is the one. The light. In the beginning was the word. It is the logos. Martin, brother, how are you? Um, I see David Del Delmar is messaging me. Man, you got a request, David. Hey, Martin, if you know David, will you send him this link, brother? Because I think he's messaging me and can't find it. Will you send him this if you don't mind, brother? I really appreciate you, Martin. Love you. But it'll, it'll help you make sense of a lot of the things in, in the Bible that uh, we, we don't know. We don't know why Adam and Eve left the garden and it was already people. You, you know, Christians have done, you know, they, they try their best because you have to come up with something. You have to tell the people something. You can't say, I don't know, I'll look into it or that's deep. There were so many beings, the insects, the spirits. The spirits of the earth, the spirits of the beings who were here and destroyed and are still here in the shadow realm. Yeah. All that's in there. Abraham was a deep dude, man. We, we read about them like they're, they're humans. Those, those guys, they were from the sun, from the place of burning. They were, they were gatekeepers. They were watchers. They were, they created Nephilim. They weren't Nephilim. They created them. They mixed with the other beings. They mixed with the soil and put their souls inside of humans or what we'll call humans or mortals. So you are a eternal spirit inside of a, uh, what is called a, a golem. It's a. It's it's mud. It's it ha, It's an enclosing. It has to go inside of something. It has to be closed. 
it's a womb, just like the earth is a womb, just like your mind is a womb. But we're talking about the all this, everything, all of these laws work on every single level. They're not just the laws of physics. They're not just the laws of of energy. They're not just the laws of the imagination or the law of attraction. It's not just that. Once you know that, you'll start applying those laws to everything in your life, and you'll see everything that's in disarray, everything that's out of order, come into order. Start doing it. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Guarantee you. I put my life on it. I am putting my life on it. I've given my life to this. We look silly. It, look, it is what it is, but this is what we came from. This is who we are. You got to connect. You got to connect. Listen, the birds want to teach you. The insects want to teach you. The sun wants to teach you. At a certain time, every day, he'll meet you in that place. It's a reason why you read about Abraham and he's sitting in a tent, in a booth, in the sun, connecting. There's a reason for that. And there's a reason why they won't tell you what it is and they change it to keep it hid from you. But enough of it's there for those of you who read between the lines of the matrix, you put two and two together. Every religion, every, every denomination, they all hold a beautiful piece of the truth. A beautiful piece. But the majority of what we think, it's, it looked like, it, do, it didn't, and it doesn't. And it's scary, you know, because you, you're so married to a beautiful truth that existed. That this is it. Because we want to have it all figured out. And how many of us know early on, we're the, we're the most confident, we're the most cocky. Like, as soon as you become a Christian, or get enlightened, or become a vegan, or whatever it is, you're, you're, it's called a zealot. You become a zealot, a religious zealot. Somebody, i uh, seen the video about me, somebody, there's some videos coming out about me where people are like attacking and exposing people who have been seen with me and just stupid stuff. But one of the, the channels was, was called the Christian Crusader. <laughs> and they use their channel and platform to kill and hurt people. And it's like, do you know what a crusader is before you introduce yourself by that title? You should look into that. We're killing each other. You think you're killing the devil, but you're killing other Christians who are wounded, who have been hurt. And you're attacking them because they look different. That's a zealot. That's a crusader. You're fighting the wrong enemy. You got to deal with that early on. And, and what is the enemy to those people? To me, to you, it's somebody who is a threat, who, is, who believes something differently. And, and they're influencing people. And they might be right. But they wouldn't say they might be right. They would say that they're definitely wrong. And that's why we have to expose them. Because they're teaching false doctrine. But I'm going to tell you, the more, the more you read them scriptures, get ready to confront your false doctrine. Learn not the way of the heathen. Learn not the way of the wicked. We already have. We already have. So when they tip, when, when we feel like something's coming, watch out for the wicked doctrine. Man, listen, you don't even understand the wicked doctrine that you're already in. The wicked doctrine that you're in a cubicle for 12 hours. Go sit in the sun 12 hours a day and, and, and see what happens. Put your feet on the ground. Not even 12 hours. Forget that. That's crazy. That's, nobody can do that right now. Listen, 10 minutes. Give me 10 minutes of you closing your eyes and put your face to the sun and breathe and feel the ground under under you and plant that rod which is the magical rod that buds that Moses had planted in the soil and see what happens put my life on it for those of you who are seeking and they keep the truth from you yeah we got everything we need according to life and godliness everything the lie of the enemy or the devils is to tell you that you don't What's coming? What's coming? What's coming? Prophecies are coming. Things are happening. No, they already... Wh who is here? It is finished. I'm here. <sighs> Breathe it in. Feel it, man. Like, you are a little world. You are a universe. You have to govern it. That's the law of attraction. And then there's levels. Dude, you're mixing new age with the things of God. 
Well, tell me what isn't New Age mixed with the things of God in the Bible. Give me one example and I'll show you where it is. So I challenge you. I challenge you to answer your que all of your questions. Show me one example of something that is original in the Bible that is not New Age. The Bible is the most magical, mystical, metaphysical, spiritual, esoteric, occult book you'll ever find. For sure. For sure. It includes influences from all of the best parts of all of the texts. Yeah. So good. Virginia says now first person, present tense, yeah. Now. Yeah, what it says now faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. But what when? Hoping for it to come? No, bringing it to now. Now faith. The things that are, you think are coming, the things that are, bring it to now, watch what happens. Don't and watch what happens. You're going to stay in the rut. You'll stay in the rut. Chasing your tail. I've, I've did it. We do it. Right? But we learn from our mistakes. Martin, crystals in the Bible, the entire little breastplate of the priests were made of crystals. Yeah, um, that, that's how you know, that's just a simple blasphemy. See, it starts with something small for you to like, hold on, I thought it was one way, but it's another. The full armor of God in the, in the book of Ephesians and Corinthians, when it talk, all throughout, it'll let you know what it is. I'm big on that. I can't wait to be able to like do the visual because they... They've tricked you with images, with pictures. That's why you go to any Christian bookstore and you, and you get a book on the full armor of God. They're going to show you Roman armor. Roman armor. The full armor of God. And then you listen to a sermon. And they're going to equate the full armor of Yah with Roman armor. As if they did battle according to the flesh like the Romans did. No, they understood this was a spiritual battle. That the weapons of their warfare were not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Where is the strongholds? In your mind. That's just, this is one thing, but look into it. Anything that you can find in the scripture, in, in the New Testament, anything you're going to find in the Old Testament. It's an overview and a fulfillment. It is the Old Testament revealed and the new is the, the old is the new revealed. The new is the old sealed. So the precepts that Jesus taught you to, to live by and to study and the parables he gave you, he was giving you keys on how to interpret the Old Testament spiritually. Not according to the flesh. The flesh profiteth nothing. But according to the Spirit. If you live by the Spirit, you're, you're living in eternity. It's now. But if you live according to the flesh, you'll die. The most beautiful thing that was given to us, um, the, our, our manual, from e Emmanuel, right? Emmanuel, was taken and tainted. Full armor of God of the Roman armor. Listen, just Google, I mean, not even Google, like get a Bible search program or go to Google, go to Bible... Bible Hub, go to like Blue Letter Bible, East Shore. There's so many. There's so many ways. The scripture says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. When it talks about a two-edged sword that you had that the that is the word of God, we think of a sword, a Roman sword, a metal sword. It's not what a two-edged sword was. Not in the Old Testament. They're quoting the Old Testament. Ezekiel talks about the full armor of God. You know what the helmet's called? The helmet of salvation in the full armor of God? It's called Yeshua. That's the name of it. In the Old Testament, helmet of salvation put on is the head of every man. 
It says put on Christ, put on salvation. And in, in him comes everything according to his order, the order of Melchizedek. You become a priest. He, he is your high priest. Let's get this straight. He is your high priest. But you also become a priest and a king. And you serve under the high priest. So the high priest weren't walking around with no swords. But you know what they were walking around with? Daggers. Staffs. Wands. Sticks. That they can do things with. Crystals. They can do things with. They can create things out of nothing. Out of thin air. They could create things. They create water out of crystals. Why? Because there's, crystal, there's crystals in the clouds. There's crystals in the air and the atmosphere. There's positive and negative ions that are literally in the ground when you ground. And you can create things out of it and birth them. They understood that. And when, when people start learning this, you see what happens to them. First of all, they get uh, killed by their, by their own. So go no further if you don't want to be crucified because you got to take up your cross. And you're going to look different. You're going to sound different. But they'll call you crazy. He said that you can take crystals and pull and make things out of it. You can pull water out of the atmosphere. You can get the waters beneath. You can get water for free. You can actually go out. If you ask your father, he'll give it to you. If you need water, he gonna, he's going to give it to you. He's gonna rain, the rain will come and give it to you. But that's crazy. Oh, you, but you're the one buying bottled water. But I'm crazy. Okay. They're selling you water taxing you and, and, the, and that price is going up go to a concert and buy a bottle of water see how much that is <laughs> Esther says the light of God is not the light of the sun Everything comes out of the sun. It came out of the sun. It's all, it's all, it's all the same light. He's the light of the world. That's right. Tell them, light of the world. Rainbows are portals. Could be. Could be. Um, James says Christianity is from the devil. Certain sex is definitely there. There definitely devils in it. Patrick Cuzzo, what's up, brother? Are you there? You said you joined for a second. Y'all see y'all? If y'all, they tell me how did Jesus command the, the seas? How did, how did Jesus speak and the winds and waves obeyed him? Because he took authority. No, it's not by power nor by might, but by my spirit. Maybe he was friends with the elements. Maybe he asked them. Maybe he asked, maybe Ezekiel asked the ravens and, and they brought him bread. Or maybe it's make-believe. Maybe it's metaphorical. It is. It's all of that. It's in your head. But what does that, why does that make it not real? Because what you, what you believe becomes real to you. And I'm going to see it. I guarantee you I'm going to see it. I've chased demons. Guess what? I've saw them. I've chased angels. I've saw them. I've chased birds. I've saw them. I'm chasing to rebuild that friendship that we had with nature. Because if you're talking about the fall, how they, they took water and bottled it up and sold it to you, they took God, bottled it up and sold it to you in religion. I always used to get mad, like, because I'll post little things on my Facebook and, like, trying to get back in church and stuff and trying to get my life right and just feeling I need prayer, I need fellowship, you know, and I can't really go any, I can't just go to any church, y'all. Um, first of all, they, you know, they, it's, 
this awkward, they won't have me, but, um, but also, I mean, I want the gospel, right? I want the good, I want good news. Um, but I remember posting it on my Facebook and people were like, man, Nature is my church. Nature is my church. I'm like, yeah, I get that, but like, I want, I need church. I need to hear the gospel. I need to hear the word, man. When that word is spoken, when the word is spoken, man, come on. And and to be, I would kind of get mad when people would say, you know, the earth is the church or nature is my church. But my goodness, how am I understanding now? Learn to learn that. I've learned every other doctrine. I followed every other teacher, but the one that's been begging, begging for your attention in a moment, begging. I, I've begged men to father me and God won't let them. He won't let them. People who led me to the Lord, people who taught me about Christ, they abandoned me. My father in the flesh abandoned me. It's for a reason. I started looking for men to father and teach me. And yeah, you can learn stuff from people for sure, but to have somebody to take you under their, under their wing, the Lord, the Lord will take you under his wing. It says that the heavens declare the glory of God. The open skies proclaim the works of his hands. The birds, and we're talking about on a allegorical or spiritual, but I'm talking about on a wild level too. I'm talking about a wild level. I'm talking about a wild level. What are you talking about a wild level? Well, we're already at a wild level. Look what's happening in the earth. Look what's, look what's going down in the earth. You can't keep this, but you can be a good steward of it while you're here. And that's how you're gonna be judged. How you treat people, who disagree with you, how you govern your body, your temple. You're going to be judged on all of that. You're being judged now, not going to be, even the going to be is still pushing it back, but you got to bring that into the now moment. Know that you're going to be, that you're being judged daily. Every time that sun moves upon you, when the spirits move over you, when the spirits move under you, you're a current, you're a Taurus field, Tarodia field, you're a home, you're a, you're a building, a temple, a temple of God in the heart and the mind. We got it backward. That, that, so backward is blasphemy. It's the un, unpardonable sin. It won't be forgiven. Again, it's nothing you did or that you can do, but it's much bigger than you. It, is, it was done before you. You were born in it. That's why when you start waking up and you feel like you're going mad, it's because you're living in a mad world. You're becoming more sane. You're being in tune with the energies and the agendas and all of this stuff. And you feel like you're going crazy. It's called a spiritual awakening. It's what we call it. It's called being born again, being born of the spirit. You're born of the soul. You're born of the soul of the animals. We share in part with the animals for sure, but you have to, you have to transcend. Your soul has to become a spirit. That yin yang that is evenly divided, good and evil. You got to let the, the good outweigh the bad. You got to step in. Let's just say, I pray and hope that every person, um, even just one degree, and that's what's been happening. The people, the souls who, who, are, who are coming here, choosing love, even just a little bit, just more than they've given are leaning into it. That's how we, that's why we get an upgrade. This planet's going through a change. This ain't just me. It's different. It was just me. I'm making the Christians lash out because everywhere they go, they're talking about crystals and new age and earthing and meditation and yoga and breath work. Come on now. Come on. We're making the churches like on its last leg, the tears. And you're finding out that they're, yeah, 
you only have a hope. You ain't got no power. You got a hope. And that hope is inside of you. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. You know how many sick and broken hearted people up in the church right now? Come on, y'all. Come on. Stand up and be counted, man. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. They worship. They know not what. We worship in spirit and in truth. Spirit, inspire, spiritus, inspiration, inspiration, to prophesy is to be moved with inspiration by the Holy Spirit. To speak as inspiration. Everyone's prophesying, everyone's channeling, but you know not who you channel. Be specific. Channel God, channel God, channel grace, channel love, channel healing. You watch a video and you'll become a mouthpiece for that. You're channeling this person's information. You become a channel, a television channel that's pulling in signals that's being broadcast from somewhere else. We are channels. Well, I was supposed to have David on here, David Delmar Coates. Um, give me one second. Let me try to invite him. Just sent him a message. Maybe he'll join. Might need to get out of the sun shortly because if you, uh, the phone will stop working. That's funny. The phone gets hot and it shuts down, but I turn on in the sun. Chasing him up, female. The woodpeckers. It's not like being attacked. It's two woodpeckers. Unless he's chasing them off out of his territory. Christ, the hope of glory. Yep. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ out of you, right? Come on. Child White is the manifestation of that hope. The anointing, the oil of joy the oil of gladness, the oil that the virgins had within their, their lamps for the, the wedding day that helped them to get through the dark night. You're going to need it. Not just one time either, not a one-time experience, but continue. Bible says be being filled, continually being filled. Well, how can I keep being filled? Because nobody laid hands on me. No, let the, let the Lord lay hands on you. Really? Ask him. Yeah, he will. He'll, he's a priest too. Let him bless you. I'm trying to get uh, my, my buddy to join y'all. I'm sorry he can't figure out how to do it. David Delmar Coates, if you see me live, if you're watching live, brother, just click. There should be a join button. I'm supposed to be able to invite you myself, but it's not letting me but you should be able to send me a, a request. <clears throat> Thank y'all for the stars. Um, man, see, all of these subjects, you can just stay on for so long. I do have a bad habit of jumping around just because it all runs together, but I want to, um, yeah, because they all tie in together, all of them. There's a... um. There's a map that um, what's his name? Jordan Peterson shared of all of the, the Bible verses that reference 
and there's over like 66,000, maybe more, maybe 600,000, but all of the verses that, that reference, many of us know like five of them at first, like in, Christ, in Christianity, we like read about, he was pierced for our transgressions, he suffered for our iniquities and those kind of things that, and we know that, that we, that's talking about Christ, right? But we know a few scriptures here and there, but we don't know that they all reference back and forth. And I think I got David joining me now. And that's how my mind works, making all those connections. Brother. Brother, man, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm at, you're out in that Alabama heat, and I'm, like, not sure technically what to do. I finally figured it out. Thank you, man. <laughs> no, I, I, I love it. I need it. Yes, I need it. How well. are you, man? Real good. You know, I was just enjoying listening to everything you've been sharing here. And uh, I'm just honored to be on with you, man. I was excited to get the invite. And uh, it's just great to be with you and, and, and your people. And um, I, I love everything you've been sharing. And yeah, I think I think it's an important topic to, to discuss because this is super prevalent to what's going on. And uh, yeah, it's a passion for me, too. So my heart burns with you, you know. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sir. I've been I've been noticing you've been uh uh, doing free flow, playing the piano and singing, making up songs as you go, like worship songs and just songs of like expression and joy, which is worship, right? Yeah, uh, I've been, I, I really love what comes out of you. I read the other day okay. about, you know, sing a new song unto the Lord, you know, make it up. Don't, yep. don't, don't recite an old one. Don't learn a song, but learn to sing a new one, how you're feeling, how you're expression, uh, expressing right now. And I feel like that's what you're doing. Um, I yes. do music, obviously, but um, I, I'm not the best singer, and I, I got a uke, and I've just been coming out and just trying to tap into that a little bit, and uh, I don't like my voice and things, but I'm learning. I'm actually learning to to sing a little bit by following the notes on the guitar um, and just making stuff up. It's a, it's a, it's a baritone uke, but, but I feel it. You know what I'm saying? I feel that inspiration that we that just talked about the, uh, in being inspired. Can you talk a little bit about you doing that recently yeah man um i mean for me i i've i've been in music for a while um i i've written songs and recorded them and that process was great but you know it got to a spot where i had to make a decision i was going to either go the traditional route which is the music industry that i worked quite a few years in or go the direction where my heart was pulling me and that direction was what what you're seeing me post down these videos that was over that was well over 10 years ago i mean it's certainly something i've been crafting ever since but um i just made this decision and it's funny the day that i made that choice i felt like i i took on an identity it's uh it's something and i was at a spot in my life where i really needed something like that and the lord he just provided i took that decision and just decided i'm going to build this thing around it and um today and what i'm starting to post and these videos is it starting to come together um which is exciting and just inspiration i never know what's going to come out um i've just yeah. I've sharpened my skills on, on singing and piano and i used to hate my voice man so i can totally relate with you um it is it's only recently where i feel like i got over the hump of being able to actually know what singing is i'm um, not to say you don't know that but i surely didn't um but it's just at a spot now after having dealt with some mental health stuff that i was not aware of um, it's like once I got that addressed, it opened up this um, reservoir of, of places I could travel with it now. And now I just, I have a free flow, like you kind of put it to where I just trust in my skills. I trust in the Holy Spirit. And I'm always interested to see what's going to come out because um, that's the excitement. And it for me, that's the reason I chose not to go that traditional route because I'm all about the in the moment, the excitement and what possibly could come out this Maybe something that's really important to hear, because uh, that's never—it's absolutely never me. But uh, but it's always a joy to hear myself speak as a vessel through the Holy for the Holy oh, Spirit. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. A joy. I love it, and it is a joy, like you said. It it, it is a joy. Yep. Yeah, there's no greater feeling than to um to know that your words carry weight, you know, or your your singing carries weight, and it has the ability to to set people free. It has the ability to heal words of healing. It said he sent forth his word and healed them. So if we're connected with whoever that is, then our word should be able to send forth and heal too. And you're, yes. you're you know, 
let, you know, allowing God, allowing nature to sing over us, you know, like there's so much yeah. power that we've, we've lost. Um, mm. yeah, and, and I think we've seen it a little bit like in, you know, in churches and stuff too, they get into like the prophetic free flow, but even yeah. that there's a place where you have to detach and you know what I'm talking about. Detach mm -hmm. from the sour notes to not care. It is, it is yes, in the moment. Mom. A sour note was in the moment. I, yeah. you know, I didn't know what I was going to say next in the moment. And, yep. and um, <laughs> when you can detach from yeah. that, then you get into the flow state, which we're just talking about music. We're not talking about yeah. writing. We're not talking about studying. We're not talking about playing basketball. We're talking about music, but That's we right. are talking about all of those as well. So yeah. such a beautiful experience to, to, to tap in. Um, Jesus taught not as one of the Pharisees, but as one who had authority, you know, and, and, the, and the people noticed because they're teaching the yeah. same things. We're si both singing, and that guy's actually a better singer, but your words carry weight. You're, when you speak, something happens, and that's where we know how to you know, judge the, uh, the anointing, and if God is in it, which he's in what? The moment. Yes, come on, come on, man. Love, beautiful. I love the way you put all, I love the way you put it. Um, I'm like, wow, that's exactly what I've been trying to describe it for a long time. So I'm going to have to, I don't know if this recording is that I know it'll be a replay. I'm going to have to write some of that stuff down because I've been trying to articulate. It's like, you're saying, I'm like, yeah, that's beautiful. That's what I've been trying to articulate, what you just said, man. <laughs> hey, this, that's what we're all doing. Yes. Where, yes. You know, that's, that, I mean, that's, on, that's the only thing a teacher is. Like, a lot of the stuff we already know. We just yeah. haven't heard it articulated. And then when we see it, then we're like, oh, that's possible. Yes. That's possible. If they did it, I can do it. Wow. Yes. He articulated. Exactly. He talked about the flow state and he was able to create there. Can I get in the flow state and create? No, not you. Not you. Because you can't sing. Well, can I learn to sing? Well, when you abandon yourself, it doesn't matter how, how you sing, you know, um, yes. or, or how you play or how good you, you write or anything because you get into that flow state. And there's a lot of people yeah. who talk about it. There's a lot of people talk about the flow state. But, there are. But it's only in the moment. It's not in the moment is everything though. It it's is yesterday. It's today. It's forever. Mm. It's tomorrow. It, everything is in the now moment. And uh every person, every idea, yes. everything. And when you yes. become a channel for that, you're a channel. Um for yeah, good. Because you set you, you set your mind on what you want to channel. Yeah. You're clear. That's, I yeah. want to channel love and creativity. But if you're having a bad day and you want to channel like depressing music, you become a channel for that. And it's not necessarily bad. Read the Psalms. Yeah. yeah exactly. There's some, there's some depressing <laughs> Psalms. Lord, everybody's trying to oh, kill sure. me. That's what right. do I do? My friends are forsaking me. What do I do? You know, they, they try, yes. I'm about to die. Deliver my soul yeah. from hell. So, but it, but it was, it was, it was real. It was real. And, and other people were experiencing it and they experienced it, that, that those songs. And today we still read them. And we experience yes, we it do. and we feel it because it relates to us, man. So good. Yeah. Uh, be just uh, beautifully the way you, you articulate all that. That's um, my, my heart's just really just loving it. And thank you for it, man, because it's uh, poetic. It's beautiful. And um, uh, yeah, it's just really great, man. Really, really great. Love it. Yes, sir, brother, for sure. Thank you for what you're doing, man. I, it's an inspiration of me to even come out and think of, you know, think of you when I'm playing the guitar. You know, like, hey, yeah. he's doing it. He's doing it. I've seen other people do it, but I'm yeah. just starting out. Like, I, I, I don't like my voice. You know, I got a, my tone. Like, you get ideas, though. Once you're in that spot, you're getting, because that's, if you already have an idea, then you cool. you cool. You got one. But if you show up yeah. without an, an idea or an agenda, then one can be given to you. Absolutely. So I'll show up and just start playing and say, you know what? When I talk, my voice is in this this key just with my regular yes. tone i don't have to try to change it it's way exactly. up here in this note so i'm going to go retune my uke to the open string is going to be my my voice right yeah that was to try I, it you don't ever know oh i was going to just say that the hardest thing i had that just really took a lot of on 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 un, doing things is I've gone to concerts my whole life, and whenever I've gone to concerts, there's always the loud, the, the it's always very loud there. So when you're singing the songs, you gotta like 
you got to go high. You got to almost like project it. And you almost got to like scream it. And when you go to enough concerts and your only experience singing is that, well, when you go to try to learn how to sing, uh, learn how to sing it, you, your voice is like, well, this is what I know. And it's like, no, you, you've got to take your speaking voice. And like that, that's your, yeah. that's your, that's your home base. That's your, yep. that's your home base. <laughs> that everything comes, you build from that. And I'm like, no, I, I've got to be up here. And I would listen to thousands of my recordings and go, what is the problem here? Something's not matching up. And I, it just took a long, long time <laughs> to figure that out. But uh, you know, once it finally was something I understood, it's like, okay, now I got to work and just work and keep my mind learning slow and just know and, I, and I've developed systems of keeping that low because when you come from the, the larynx being low, you can kind of dig under and then come up. And uh, it's just uh, it's taking a little while, but when, when you get there, it's, uh, it's worth the time, man. It really is. I've, I've played with guitars for a very long time and, and instruments yeah. and I do music and stuff, but I've never, yeah. never, you know, sat down and tried to follow from bass, like you said, from bass and let's work from bass. Let's keep going back to bass, yeah. which, is this, yes. which is this note. And then let me go up, and then let me come down, and and just mess, just play with it. I've never been taught that. I mean, you've I've heard it. Yep. Your singing voice is your natural voice. Try to find, but it's so natural. It's it's yeah. common. You don't want that, and you don't like it. Especially with, most people hate hearing their own voice back to them. Yeah. So they want to yes. sound like Aaron Lewis from Stained, or you want to sound yep. like somebody else. So you try to match that, yep. and that range is like not who you are. So yeah, so well put. I'm excited to even explore that a little bit, you know? Yeah, me too, man. I, I have a feeling you're going to catch it pretty quick. You just, you have a musicality to you and you understand how it all works. So uh, I have a feeling you're going to catch it much quicker than I did. <laughs> <laughs> and hallelujah for that, because because that would be a better thing for sure. <laughs> well, that's what happens because, yeah. you know, we help, we help each other articulate it. And then so Absolutely. the next person coming up, you don't have to go through the same stuff. I'm going to teach you and help you yes. get through the, the things that, were an obstacle for me and that's yeah that's life you know that's these live streams that's this music that's everything podcast yeah. it's like listen this this didn't work for me don't do this yeah and this did work try this yeah you don't have to but if you'd like to and i want to hear what worked for you and what didn't yeah. work and i think if we did that and we do that we're going to progress like really fast. Yeah. Like you just said, you know, yeah. like you, I'm going to catch on a lot faster than, than you did. And, um, yes. and, and the next ones after us will catch on way faster. Yeah. Just the way God intended it. <laughs> so because he um, says our gifts aren't for us and for everybody else. I think what you just said, that's what he means by it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, how did you uh, come to faith, man? What, what is your, your story of coming to faith? <laughs> Well, you know what? Um, you're actually part of it. I'm not sure if you know that or not, but um, hmm. you, you, were, you were so gracious to come onto my podcast um, a few years ago, um, Superpower Creators, and we had a talk. And um, I was excited for our I was excited for our talk, but when you got on, you, you kind of stuck, started talking about Christian stuff, and um, it really caught me off guard. I was like, I, I was not expecting it, and the, and the more you shared, I'm like. Wow, um, like this is hip stuff. This is very, this is very cool and very current stuff. And what am I missing? So mm. you really actually were the door that opened up for me to have a faith that is the one I'm walking in today. Wow. You were the first door. Um, was watching a, a Facebook commercial to 100x, which opened up me to the kingdom, uh, was the second door. And then past yeah. that, it's just been all oh, Jesus, Jesus. But um, so I'm not sure if you knew that, but you actually played a pretty integral part of the reason I'm where I'm at today. And I wanted to personally say thank you for that because, um, yeah, that uh, I'm the one that really received from that from that talk. So um, well, thank you so yeah, much. Man. Yeah, I didn't know that yeah, personally, welcome. you know, as intrinsically, but but I do, you know, yeah. I am mission minded when I go on to try to plant seeds and water seeds and represent what we think that. Uh, this thing was supposed to look like, you know, yeah. and I know we've all been tricked and we're all learning yep. daily. We're all having to relearn. We're having to be retaught. And thank you for sharing, sure. man. That means a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. So much, so much confirmation. Absolutely. Yeah. That, um, absolutely, man. Every, every person that, you know, that gets inspired 
you know, I love tracing it back. I know? do too. And, uh, My name used to be Tracy, so, you know, that's true. <laughs> yeah, well, like everybody that you inspire, everybody that you encourage, that you equip, like you share, I believe you share in that harvest, man. I think that, uh, yeah, absolutely. It, um, it comes back, it's connected. And, and we have more impact and more people are watching and paying attention than we know, even in the small stuff, especially in the small stuff, not even in the small stuff. Yeah, especially. yeah. And I have like, I'll do podcasts with people and they'll um, um, start a podcast after. They'll see how successful mine is or uh, I'll encourage them and they'll go out and start a podcast mm. and they'll be like, they'll tell me a couple months later, dude, I started this podcast because of you. And now they're reaching awesome. thousands of people with their story wow. and the gospel and like encouraging people to, man, that's like everything that the ripple effect is the flower yeah. of life. It's just continues mm. to grow each one, reach one. And we're all part of that body. That's yeah, what a that body is. Yes. Yeah. Cause we're all, we're all connected. And so Christ is at the center or the mm. head and everything else yes. that extends out of that is is a part of the body it, everything is a cell everything and, and as you come yes. together you formulate the body of christ on earth the body of that which is good yeah. the body of love of bliss of whatever same thing of, as a body of wickedness a body of yeah. people who maybe let's just throw a name out there people who identify with the work of alistair crowley or something and people yep. gather in his name and remember him and, and learn his precepts and teach them and, and proselytize and, and they gather, they are a body or a nucleus for Aleister Crowley. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, or for anything, Babel. for the, the, the Tower of Babel and yeah. everything that is wicked that's not built, up, built upon the foundation of Christ or love gets destroyed because it gets shaken yes. and goes through the fire. And that's what Sodom yeah. and Gomorrah was about. If it doesn't, yeah. if it's not righteous, it's going to be destroyed in the end. When yeah. Everything passes through that fire. So everything that is yes. love and everything that is beautiful is going to pass through it. And that's a it good thing. It. Yeah. it is scary if you're 100% wicked, 100%. Yeah. If, you, if, you're, if your yin-yang is all black, there is yes. no, no light in them. How great is that darkness? Oh, yeah. You, you are what the Bible uh, describes as wicked. You're not born that way. There, there were beings who were that are disembodied spirits that are influencing people yep. and have yep. hosts. Yep. But, but even if a person is just a little bit of light, that spark, that light continues to live. It is eternal because you, you can't kill it with Absolutely. fire. No. Fire, fire yeah. strengthens it. It goes back to where it came from. Yeah, the, the true fire source. And how somebody attached hell to fire, it's like, no, there's, that's, not a, that's actually not a there's no connection there. It's the, the fire is all the refiner's fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fire. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but God is a consuming fire. Yes, yes, he is. Yeah, and he's good at it. <laughs> yeah, he's very good at it. He knows what he's doing. Very we used to it. run from, run yeah, from yeah. judgment, man. Like I'm running yes. to judgment, man. Like I'm running yes. to it. Come on. Yes. Not when I die. No, today. Lord, judge yeah, me. Today. See if there be any wicked way in me. Why? Because if I get that out of me, he'll give me some more righteousness. He'll give me yes, more light. Sir. Yeah. It's a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Come on. Like, what the heck? When yes. they got scared of judgment days coming, the yeah. terrible day of the Lord. The terrible day yeah. for who? Yeah. <laughs> for your fleshly exactly. nature that loves sin. Yeah, get rid yeah. of it. Get you got it. Because it's killing yeah. you. It's killing yeah. you. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's death in a box, uh, you know, it's a death in a box, <laughs> it takes it to a box that this world says, all right, yeah, you had a good life, yeah, let's bury you, nobody's going to remember you, let's move on to the next one, we've got four more today, you know, <laughs> there's so more than true, that, man. there's a lot more than that. That's the wrestling match, that's who we are, we're, you know, we're, we're, we are mixed, yes. mixed beings, we have m multiple things in us, nobody is all good, like, no. I'm telling you, people get mad. This offends a lot of people. But when Jesus, when I don't think Jesus even was a hundred percent good, he just con he knew that he yeah. was nothing. He just chose good. He continued yeah. to choose good. And Absolutely. when you know that, I believe that that you are neutral and you got to choose good. Yeah. Choose this day. Choose tomorrow. Choose yeah. this day who you'll serve. And Jesus continually did that. Yeah, and that's I why he exactly was, it was that. count it was counted unto righteousness for him. 
Yeah. Makes it even all the more amazing what he did. Um, <laughs> just by what you said, because it's just, yeah, it's, it's really, it's beyond comprehension. You, know, you can try to think that's, you no, know, it's, it's beyond comprehension and, uh, that's Jesus. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> choosing love, choosing life. And yeah. Yes. So good. So good. Yeah. So, uh, what are you, what are you doing? Um, as far as like podcasts and stuff like that, are you doing any of that or what are you doing for work or for yeah. creative outlets and yeah, man. Um, so I'm working on something called the joy sound. Um, and what, you know, I love the way you kind of described how you interpret what it is to do with the piano and singing, because it is, it is joy and it's joy that, that comes out of me. That's the, you know, the, the voice of the Lord, he, his voice is in all of us. And so that frequency of joy, the love of him, um, he, it channels through vessels through me. And so this, the, the, the joy sound, um, is, and it's, it's actually something that's still sort of developing, but, um, it's what I've heard from the Lord my whole life. And it's basically taking, um, uh, the technology of sound and the technology of frequency and putting those together with intention, my intention that is his of the heart. And he's going to broadcast that out in a way that is going to be transformative and uh, in a way that's going to be bringing change. And so I'm fortunate and I'm grateful he's allowed me to be the one to do it, but I'm at a spot now finally in my life where he's starting to put pieces together and that's joy sound. And um, he's got some things he's gonna do with it that um, uh, that it, from what I hear the Lord say is not things that, you know, that he's had specifically done these certain things. So um, finally that's coming together. And uh, besides just being a dad, with two young, very, very active uh, uh, children under 10. Um, life seems to fill in <clears throat> in between the, the blanks pretty quickly, so. <laughs> mm hmm Yeah. That's good, bro. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Being able yeah, to teach people to enter the flow state and this then write it. a song. Yeah. Because once you write it, you can go back to it. So obviously the songs are, yes. are recorded in hymns or for a reason, but where they yeah. come from is, is even even more important. So that's that's cool. Tap it into the flow. The yeah. Flow. Hey, what, I want to ask you what, what you think about NFTs. Do you have any thought about NFTs? Um, I mean, I've got some NFTs out. I yeah. just, I've lost the little money that I've put in, in time. Yeah. I've lost it. Um, the fees to, to get your money out or to transfer it to somewhere else. I just, I was, I just got an offer for my first NFT and, yeah. um, I couldn't accept it because I had to pay money to accept it. Yeah. Um, so for the me, it's just fees. been something that, yeah, those gas fees are insane. I put up a few yeah, dollars for a couple months in like locking it in, in one and uh, made like, I think I made like 40 bucks by yeah. locking up a thousand dollars or something for, for three months and to try to get the return. And I got four, made 40 bucks. Cool. Let me get my little money out. I made yeah. 40, but it cost me 50 to take my money out. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and the more money you put in, the more money it costs to get out. You know, yeah. I just, I had a bad experience with it. Um, yeah. I don't have, it's great idea. Great idea. But the gas fees and all of that is just insanity. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I was thinking, um, of one thing with the, the, the songs was to, um, to make them a deliverable product that, um, yeah, that just, it can be something different that the music industry is kind of, you know, exploiting people this way. I've kind of looked at maybe making these and then using an NFT as far as, you know, a, a marketed delivery device for, uh, for however it is that might develop. So uh, that's, that's something I'm thinking about doing, but, yeah. um, but I thought I would ask you cause I figured you probably knew something about NFTs. I would be remiss if I didn't ask you cause you're a musician also. So yeah, my friend, um, Illuminati Congo put me onto it. Uh, John Hooks, love that guy. Um, yeah. He's deep in it. Like he's got a podcast on it. He's big. He's he's oh, a believer. Wow. And so we did. Uh, well, he's a believer in that. And we we did a retreat, and he came down, and he pretty much he wanted to lead a class, but we didn't have a lot of people come to the retreat. So yeah. he wanted to lead a class, but he didn't get to do it. So he pretty much led a class with me. So yeah. he just poured everything into me, and I just asked him so many questions and got into it and started dropping money, dropping money, dropping money. But like yeah. I said, I had a, I had a bad, bad experience. It's just not good. Every, I mean, obviously yeah. like Bitcoin has dropped and all that kind of stuff, but 
Um, yeah. But I mean, there are people who are who believe in it. You know. Yeah. I, I think it has potential, but for it to be to fluctuate like that and oh, it's just, it's crazy. It's got potential for yeah. sure. It's yeah. Crazy. I hear on those gas speeds though they're they're pretty ridiculous it, mm -hmm. and almost defeats the purpose in, in, in some respect based on what whatever it is you're dealing with so um I feel you on that man <laughs> yeah it, it did for me um yeah you know there's other people you gotta you gotta learn and maybe I mean that's not everybody's story but that's my story yeah so yeah absolutely I will yeah, say absolutely that. it's not it's a, salient <laughs> universal mm -hmm. yeah that's that's it too it's just uh um you have your experiences with certain things and some things are great for another, and for some it didn't work out that way. And if it all worked that way, we wouldn't have any interchangeability with each other, and it would make things really kind of boring. So even though that sucks <laughs> with what you experienced, um, the retrospect is something that you have that's going great. Is for somebody else to have a understanding that it didn't work out for them, and um, that it keeps life interesting for sure. Oh yeah, I try to bring yeah. that. Try to bring that um, with every everything you know every especially yeah, spiritual beliefs and religion and stuff and you know you see so many so um, people that is only it's only this way it's only that way it's like no that's nothing yeah that's only <laughs> interpretation i mean just because you believe that or you had a bad experience with yoga i had yep. a great experience right or you had a bad experience with with this or that and when we try to push our narrative onto theirs as the only truth you know, we yes. move into trouble. So that's trouble to everything, and just see what their see what their concoction was. You know, people get into things thinking they're gonna fail, and you know, they get into things because they're running from God. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Or run like mm -hmm. for many people, yoga is new age, and I'm not supposed to be doing it, and God's gonna punish me, and I did it anyway. And guess what happens? God punishes you because you did yoga in your mind because that's it, it became a sin. Exactly. Because the Bible says whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And if anything yes. that you approach not of faith in thinking that you're Come on. that that you're sinning against God, you are. It becomes a sin to yep. you. Yes, but it that's does. not it's not a sin to everybody else to push on no. yoga or or eating bread or eating meat even or eating yep. food sacrificed to idols. Some person believes if they eat it, a demon will enter them. Guess what happens when you eat it? Yeah. A demon enters you. Somebody else energy. eats it. Like, hey, I'm I'm cool. No, it's just demons live in that bread, man. Don't eat the bread. It's like you know, don't go, don't walk by this shrine, and it, you'll, you know, if you believe it, you experience it, you receive it. So that's why, you know, I think the concoction of what people believe and why they believe it comes into play. Yeah, it does. Well, well it's you, just did, you, you, you're talking about hell. Like, start taking hell away from Christians and watch how they, yeah. like, they don't know God. <laughs> They only are here because he saved them from hell. Yeah. They like, love themselves from hell. <laughs> take hell away and watch what happens. They they panic. They're like, there is no grace without hell. There is no heaven without hell. There's like, no, yes, there is. Yes, there is. Yeah. They, their minds don't, it's like a major malfunction, like a machine shuts yeah. down when you take away the, the fear of death, which mm. is what Jesus did. He defeated death. He defeated mm. the second death. That you won't mm. have to die, die is what the scripture says that, you know, and once you take that away and then start giving it away freely as you receive, freely give, and then you start forgiving people's sins that have sinned against you and yes. moving into that. Now, they don't have no reason to serve God. And I've, I've probably been there to a degree. That's why I can speak on it. You know, that's my experience. Yeah. And there's totally totally people there that's not everybody's experience by any means but for many people it is yeah that's, that's well said um yeah well i mean that's that's the quest we're on is to, to help change the metanoia to change the way the church thinks and to let them know listen it's okay to not have hell as a matter of fact um you not you can you can have something right now that's much much better and that's what jesus brought that's what he's promised it's like i've already brought you something great you just it's like you said, if you don't believe it and you have that faith in your mind, you're going to manifest what it is you believe you've got. And if you think you've got hell, your life's going to be hell, man. And it's going to be kind of crappy. And you're gonna, I brought an abundance and so much better things, but you've got to believe it first and take a bite out of some kind of else. Some, take a bite out of your own beliefs 
and not be moved by everybody else's. And I think it's hard to sometimes for people to take to take that initiative to actually be bold and to say, no, this is the way I believe. Um, people are afraid to do that. That's why I admire you because you, you, you give people the permission to be bold and you give people the permission to expand their thoughts and their beliefs about things. And I think you're doing such an amazing service for the body because for the church and the body, because um, my goodness, it's just so, it's so important. And uh, it, we're, it's a blessing that somebody that you, that you have been able to establish such a, a wide audience for doing something that more people would like to be able to do um, is a great thing. And, and I hope that you are spawning other people. I hope other people are starting okay. podcasts because they've seen yours. Because my goodness, it's the ripple effect. That's how it works. And if you're sending ripples out and people are starting things new, then there's, you know, there, there's some, you can have some hope because eventually that stuff's going to start to materialize. And it's like, boom, I already shared my story. I mean, my goodness, we're having this talk and I wouldn't be here if it weren't for you, man. So you, mm -hmm. you've done it in my life. So um, I just wanted to acknowledge you for that, man. <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I do think that awesome. uh, this spiritual currency, man, it is, yeah. it's why we're here. It's, uh, it's yep. gold that cannot be destroyed. It's gold yes. that's been refined in the fire because it's good. <laughs> the fire, uh, it, it stands the test of time and, it, and the fire gets all the impurities out of it. And I thank God just for the small, you know, small things of like when I didn't have any reach or whatever, it's like, I'm glad. Like there was still like bitterness in me and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that's the deal of like searching the heart to get anything out so that he can promote you. You know, he yes. ran it, uh, with, you know, the prayer of Jabez that we prayed years ago. I don't remember that, but in the church, they had something called the prayer of Jabez. And it was just yeah. a big thing. And it was like, Lord, enlarge my territory, stretch mm. forth my borders and enlarge me to give me more reach, to give me more yeah. increase, you know, and those kind of things. And we prayed that thing daily. We read that book. And then now it's happening, you know, like wow. 20 years or so more uh, later. And, um, but I'm thankful that it didn't happen when I was still yeah angry when i didn't Ooh. when i was at war uh with with myself which caused me yep. to be at war with everyone else and it caused me to be at war with nature it caused me to be at war with christians or muslims even you know or, or yeah Catholics. yes it caused me to be at war with everything there's wars and rumors of war everywhere in my heart and in my mind and outside of me on the news they're everywhere Ooh. once you become at one and you forgive yourself yes. allow God to forgive you and mm. start forgiving others. It's yeah. So much power in that. And I'm thankful that, you know, that I get to, you know, move it to the next level, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's powerful, man. Really I, powerful. I did influence a lot of people for, for sure, but you know, I, I meant well. And that's the thing about those people who are sharing yoga is demonic, stay away from yoga. Like a lot of them mean well. Yeah. Know? And uh, in, in, in their heart and in their mind, they're doing their Christian duty. And so they're really, you can't blame them. You really have to see that and connect with that. You know, yes. even connect with the zealot part of them as the younger version of yourself that was just attacking everything and everyone that let you be different. So if you want to progress, these are, these are ways to progress. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, these are ways to go to the next level because you got to let go of things that are, that are weighing you down spiritually mm. in your in your flesh the things you daydream about the, the everything mm. and you apply that to every aspect of your life that's the process that that letting go of the letting go of the the dream you think you you've got because god's got one better for you um the, the letting go of like yeah i think of this i think of the picture of the little girl and, and she's got a She's got a little bear in front of her, and she says, but Jesus, it's, it's all I've got. And Jesus has this huge bear, and he's holding behind him. <laughs> he wants to give her, you know. And it's like, that's what it is. We like, want to hold on to it. And she's like, no, I, I've got something so much better for it. But that, like you said, that letting go is, um, can, be very, can be very tricky. Oh, yeah. I mean, I had to do that with music. Come on you know, early on, like, hey, man, you got to put music down. Like, right when I really caught the fire of, I want to be a musician. And I, yes. I, you know, I think I went to one of my first Christian concerts. And I was like, I want to be a musician. I always love music, but it's like, this is what I'm going to do. And then 
three days later, God's like, okay, you got to lay that music thing down, bro. You're just focusing. That's all you're dreaming about. You're focusing mm. on that. Lay it down. And um, yeah. and that started, I would say, a two, three year, maybe more stint where I had an idol in my living in my heart. I had a, a I was sold out to God in so many places, but but there was still so much of me that was like I couldn't receive because I didn't do the last thing he told me to do, which was, hey, lay the music down. And I would do it. I'd get fed up and I'd lay it down. Yeah. I'd burn my CDs, Christian CDs. I'd get rid of them. I'd, I don't want me, I'm only listening to worship, but then I feel called back to it. And it wasn't until I finally like, I mean, I did it several times over a few, a few period of few years because like I would be in worship and I would feel his, the anointing and feel his presence. And then it would hit a brick wall and it would like, like the, the essence and that beauty and that, that love, I would feel it. And, but in let, instead of letting it rapture my entire body and let it move to different places in my body, it would hit yeah. a wall. It was a door that was closed to mm. this thing that I didn't want, place I didn't want God to enter, which was a part of my heart. It's all yeah. And it wasn't mm. until I finally kept doing the concerts and you know, doing all kinds of music and it didn't serve me. And I, cause I knew in the back of my head, I was learning from God. Yeah. So now for every time I'm playing mm-hmm. in bands with people, we're doing big shows. I'm at freaking really big places and yeah. And everybody else is having a great time, but I'm like, I'm like, I'm like Jonah. I'm running from God. Cause yeah. He Ooh, told me come to on, man. Here. Come so on. Now everything bad that happens, you get in a car accident, somebody robs you, all of these things in your mind, you're making connections that go back to the thing that, uh, God said that you need to lay down. It wasn't until I finally said, okay, take it, God. I don't want it. Like, I'm tired of running. I'm going to seek you in ministry and seeking engagement and be a pastor or whatever that's supposed to look like. And yes. I remember when I did that and laid it down, just a few days later, he brought it back to me. Yeah. Re- yep. Renewed in his fire. Yes. Come on. To me, because <laughs> listen, He's not, not, not taking it. If there's a dream in you, yep. he put it in you. Yes. But if you but if you put it over him, the scales are not balanced. Yeah. You're yeah. unequally yoked. You are you yeah. know, don't have uneven scales. I love music more than I love God. Yeah. And that, I can relate know, to that story very much. Yeah. <laughs> but when I gave it to him, bro, I mean he's like, Okay, here you go. Yep. And yep. he did it, you know, in, in some really cool ways and just gave it back to me and anointed it. It just and anointed kind it. Of, shape it a little bit here man this is it yeah i just needed to fix it for you man you know so that's what we're talking about laid awesome. that idolatry in your heart when you enter yeah. into it and you think it's bad it is bad yeah it is, it is bad yeah especially if god tells you it's bad yeah yeah especially that one where you're the you're the, you're the jonah of your life <laughs> but i've had other people who felt that same way i don't think i did i'm i did for other things yeah um start teaching it like a law. God said Mm. that Christian music is of the flesh. I had a guy call me, a good friend of mine, he's just years ago, he's like, brother, what if the Lord uh, was to say to you today that you need to uh, quit rapping, that that rap music is, uh, Christian rap is sinful and it's of the devil of the flesh. Uh, Would you, would you, if the Lord told you to put it down, would you? Him not knowing me before that I had already put it down, you know? Yeah. And I jokingly said no. Just jokingly, would you do it? I'm like, no, come on, bro. Like, if God says it, would you? Yeah, there is no no, right? And uh, he's like, well, God's saying it to you now, brother. You got to put the music down. I was like, I'm trust me, I've been through this. I know what his voice sounds like when he's telling me to yeah. put it down, and he's blessing it. And uh, but we start projecting. Yes. Our yeah. our our inner sanctification. We start putting pushing down on other. God says that all rap music is bad. God says yeah. all yoga is the devil or all churches are corrupt. No, not all churches. It's the ones you've been going to. All pastors yeah. are all Christians. No, no, no. All Muslims are demon worshipers. No, not all of them. Like no, all of these, all. All black people are yeah. this. All white people mm. are racist. Yeah. All rich Come people on. are snobs. Okay, you better be careful. Yeah, that's quite a blanket you. that you're casting. Yeah, and we've all done it. I've done no, it. No, absolutely. absolutely. I'm thankful I've done it because he's been able to reveal Exactly. Me. <laughs> and, and show me what they really were. You can't say all anything. Exactly. Lord. Yeah, I can. I can still say thank you, Lord, for 
lifting up that blanket I used to um, blanket over all the alls and the everys and the onlys um, <laughs> because those are like my family members, you know. <laughs> those were my family members, so I realized, hey, uh, my, my family is a little messed up. I thought it was me all the time. No, it was, it was, uh, it was everybody I've been hanging around calling them uh, my closest of closest. Uh, no, it's time to uh, degroup and rejoin it to something else. And just about anything else would be better because this is not serving at all. This is actually pretty dangerous over here. So, yeah, that, uh, I, I know what you mean on that. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, and it, it's so many. It's isms, you know, isms yep. that you put out there. and Yes. And you, you judge. About, that's why the scripture says don't judge anything before it's appointed time. It's the same mm. principle. Yes. You judge, you judge the person based upon their their outward appearance. Yeah. You judge the you judge them on their profession. You judge mm, them on their wow. salary. You judge them on their on their mental handicap, or yeah, or whatever. And I was totally or skin color. Um, we've all been maybe some of those. Fit, maybe there's others that is different for everybody. But don't judge anybody until you are able to partake of its fruits and and sit long enough. We judge nature, we judge the birds, we judge the earth, yeah. we judge the wind, you know, everything. And so by doing that, before it's appointed time, you miss on what it has to bring. It didn't even, it didn't even yeah. have time to, to plead its case to you. Mm, man, it's powerful. Ooh, come on, man. It's if, you let it, if you let it plead its case to you and then you judge it, you judge it righteously. Mm. I don't even know what this little guy is, but he keeps coming up, this little worm. Hey, buddy. And, and I, I don't. I say I I love you, worm. I love you, fella. Yes. I've been so scared of the Ooh. of the insects, but they're they're the ones that that have been coming, and I think my bird wants to come eat them. <laughs> but yeah, judging wow. stuff, bro. A fear we judge out of fear. I judge insects out of fear. Mm. But I tell you what, the, the insect the insects are are closer to us, I think, than the birds. And the first thing that what God's been using has been the insects lately. Very strange. Mm. Never thought he could. Sounds obscure, but he's he's been using them, and uh, I want I want him to use the birds. But he said, nope. These are closer to you. The birds are scared of you right now. The insects aren't. But the, <laughs> the bird the birds will come. But isn't you know you judge them. You think you know what you got it all figured out until you allow them to to speak to you. Um, with that being said, <laughs> the the animals and the insects and all of those guys. Um, and uh, Mormonism, I don't know much about it. I've been looking yeah. into it a little bit, but I do know that there was a series on Netflix about like trouble in Mormon town or whatever it's called, Salt Lake City. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard about this, but Joseph Smith um, had an angel that came to him that he would show him where treasures were and things. Mm. And I think it's the angel Morani. I'm not sure. Don't quote me. But yeah. in the, in their text, they talk about this angel that came and would lead Joseph Smith to treasures and angels and, or, and gold and all kinds of things. Yeah. And he said that it was a, an angel in all of their artwork and in the text, they say angel. But the original writings that he put out, someone found and put it out that it was a salamander that appeared to him. A salamander came and told him where these golden plates were that um, I don't know wow. exactly what, what the golden plates had on them but they're what Mormonism is founded on. And, uh, and wow. the, the church was scared to get that out because that is in the uh, occult circles is that, yeah. you know, the, the uh, salamanders are these elemental beings that carry information and come to you. And they didn't want it to sound so occultic. So they just said angel and, and if, the salam if they carry a message, they are an angel, exactly what we talked yeah. about. Um, but it, it just so happened to be the appearance you judge the appearance oh a salamander you guys are yeah following insects huh? You're an insect. yeah oh. but i, I mm. find that connection very interesting too now now i do yeah i i i love that it's 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 got me thinking right now just uh, uh not i mean not so much in the moment in Mormonism, but um just but ju the, just the you know, don't judge something until it's been, you know, uh, how, how'd you put that? Don't judge until it's been um, completely come full. Appointed, appointed time. Yeah. Appointed time. Uh, yeah. yeah um, man, that's, yeah. that is so powerful. And there is, there's just like, 
I'm thinking to myself, gosh, what, what, you know, what's, what's God trying to show me that I'm judging right now uh, in my life um, that, that I'm not aware of, that I'm having this conversation that he's wanting to bring to light to for me to understand better what it is I'm judging that I might have a blind side to right now. Yeah. There's a deeper level that, that I think you're opening up here um, that for, for, for myself and not surely for others listening, it's like there, there's a deeper, there's a deeper layer level here that you can, like that's getting into the, you know, the, you know, deep of the, um, the deep of the deep. And it's like, there's so many levels and layers and you feel anything, a little bit open. If anything that you've called common, mm. if anything that wow. you've called common, um, you know, the, you, you have the precept in Acts chapter 10, where uh, Peter, they called they called people uncommon uh, and they called people yes. unclean. And, yes. um, and so God had to give, give Peter a dream because he was going to use a Gentile uh, Cornelius yeah. in Acts chapter 10. So in, in that story, God had to work on both of them. He gave Cornelius a vision and told him where to go. And one of my servants will meet you there. But then mm -hmm. he had to show himself to Peter. Peter wasn't going to go talk to uh, a Gentile because they they saw them as unclean so there was no way that i could receive from this guy you got to raise yeah. up a jew you got to raise up somebody that i Ooh. that i hold in high regards not this insect yeah sure. so what they what they called them beasts they called them dogs they called them mm. animals they called them unclean uh, unclean beasts so literally it does mm. correlate still with with the animals still um so there's mm. that and then god had wow. to give give Peter the dream so that the next day he would, he would uh, be able to go out and come to this city and know the meaning of the dream because the guy that he met who was an unclean dog in his book, he says the, the, the meaning was that you shall call no man, no person, no being unclean. Mm. Who I, I, think that's the essence, I think that's the essence of your message. Um, it, oh, it's yeah. kind of in, in a bigger totality um it's that very thing and, and i think that's the reason you have the authority to open up that to open up that that truth to it because uh my goodness you know everything you just said like that that's that's what's ailing the world yeah that that that's what's ailing the world and uh you able you know the, the ability to pull back over pull that around uh, to pull that back and to take a look into that um my goodness that is what's that's what's missing. Uh, that's because what's missing. well, you can't you can't solve the world, but you can right. solve your world. And yeah. as long as you identify it and take care of it in your world, then like you just said, you have the authority to change the mm. narrative and say, hold on, let yeah, that guy's actually a really good good dude. That guy yes. is this or that person is that or this practice the breath work or the sun is not trying to kill you or yes, you know, mm. you're not just living in, in harmony with it. Everything. And it uh, don't judge it before it's appointed time. So yeah, to know that that you are that little world, you are that universe. It's the microcosm and the macro. It's that with which is in you, is in the body of Christ is in you. Mm, and you it, you are in it. it. He and I, I, I and him. Yes. You, and then it goes to every level. Your yes. relationships, your mm. imagination, your finances, everything. It begins I to move because now you got authority to apply that principle, not to judge it. You know, mm. you get sick and you judge it like, oh, I'm sick. Maybe, maybe uh, I did something wrong, you know, kind of thing or whatever. And you start judging it and wrestling with these ideas that aren't true, uh, trying to figure it out before it's a point in time, you know, everything yeah. in our lives. Anytime something wow. we, we think is common or something we think is bad. Yeah. If it's not a bad, like you got to, in order to, you know, to get a promotion, you know, or go to a better job, you got to, you got to leave a job. You know, and yes. a lot of times we're, we're, you know, we're not going to leave a job without having a job. So sometimes that, that, that shaking only comes in a place of being fired and being let go from a job that you're like, man, yeah. just, like how disgraceful, how, how, um, mm. like that, that it's, it's, it's shameful. It's, it's condemning to have to say, yeah, I got fired or whatever. And it's like, oh, you got fired because you wasn't going to leave that job. And yeah. the very fact that you wouldn't leave and your promotion was here, we had to, you had something had to happen because you wasn't going to leave. 
without yeah. having that other giant and having everything lined up perfectly. But yeah, it's, yeah. In the, it's in the unknown where all of that stuff connects. So being able to, you know, what, what the enemy meant for harm, God in turn uses for your good. So there's yes. nothing, nothing bad. Everything is here to serve you or to teach you. If you if you're a master of it, if you're at peace with yes. it, you don't we don't rule out of anger, we don't rule out of force, not by power nor by might, but by my spirit. So as long as you're connected with the spirit and that spirit is in other things and in other people, you can identify with it and you can see Christ in it. And so instead yes. of looking at it, the, the, I think the only judgment is to say, Father, where are you in this? What are you saying yes. in this? Because mm. I know what I would say. I can judge it. And I think it's this. I think yes. it's that. And I think it's this. But hold on, Lord, where are you? What would you say to these people? I got some great advice to give them. But what would you say, Lord? And that's only that's in a that's in a moment, man, that we just separate. Well, what would you say? What would you say? Get quiet for a moment and to be yes. able to look at this thing and, and he'll give you a game plan. He'll tell you what to say. Yep. Uh, yes. PJ, uh, uh, Paul McKeithen says nothing happens to me, but everything happens for me. Yep. I, I'll say uh, life isn't happening to you. Life is happening through you. It's yes. happening Come through on. you. Mm. And you got the power. Adam had the power that whatever he called something, it became that. Yes. If you call and, and, and it didn't tell you its name, you gave it that name. And the power that you have in mm. your imagination and in your voice and in your world, it becomes that every time you see it, it becomes that every time you see an omen, you know, an omen as far as like, um, superstition is concerned and every time a black pat, a black cat crosses your path in front of your car it's a sign of bad luck that's just what they yeah. tell me no it's not yeah. no it's, <laughs> it's not you if you want it to be then now you're expecting bad things to happen because of a cat walk yeah. in front of your vehicle yeah. so you're going to look for it, and the first bad thing that happens your mind is going to associate something bad with it so yeah. you got to reverse it you can yes. reverse it with that listen like try it Okay, fine. You got to find something you think is bad and call it good. Mm. A situation, a person, whatever, look for that thing to bless you. There's some, there's a gold in it. If you look at it, if you mine it, if you hang out there long enough, it's got something to give you. So mm. those situations where you thought were evil, there's something beautiful in it. There's something beautiful in it. Yeah, it's beautiful in itself. Um, powerful, really. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's an avenue to travel down as opposed to the street that currently you're hanging out on that nothing seems to be the way you'd like it to be. And it's like, there's another, another route over here where everything you just shared, um, that can be the way you travel there. And all of a sudden, all the buildings, everybody comes out and greets you. And, you know, there's just the celebratory aspect to this part. We're just on the other side of the buildings. There's that street. But it's like almost like a different world over here. And that's the power of our imagination. And you didn't even know it. Didn't even know it. Yeah. <laughs> you had it the whole time. Yep. It was didn't even know it. If it you, cha you, you change the way you look at things, the things that you look at will change. Yes. Mm. And we move out from Bible. being a victim to being a victor, victorious. The way the we... That the enemy used yeah. to try to take you out. Listen, I'm going to build something out of it. All these, thrown, these stones that you, you threw at me, I'm going to make something out of it. Mm. Life gives you lemons, make lemonade, you know? Yeah, that's right. My kids just had a lemonade stand. They were running for like three weeks. I really relate to that. Um, yeah, you know, Jesus was victorious. So he's basically saying, yeah, you can be the victim if you want, but like I've already won the victory. It's like that's who you are. You have to actually work harder to be the victim. You can do it, but like I've brought you everything you actually really want to be the victor. As a matter of fact, rest in me. You really don't even have to do anything. I've already done it all, and I'll do it all with you. You do your little bit, and, and I'll do all the heavy lifting, and um, you'll love it. I promise, because the desires in your heart, I know. I put them there. You'll love it. Um, just trust me. Yeah. Just have some find yourself in faith the place of faith and trust me i'll meet you right in the middle and uh, it'll be it'll be grand <laughs> yeah christ man god god needs a body man yeah like Come on. the spirit of christ needs a body it needs a, it needs a vessel it needs 
a host. Mm. Evil spirits need a host. Yes. Like they need somebody to like they have power, right? But it just to spook you or whatever. But they if they yeah. if they can convince a person to do something for them, now now they have a physical representation in this world that they that they're just a shadow of. So mm. when you let Christ live in you, work through you, move through you, clean, cleanse your temple, flip the tables over. Yeah. Get everything right how it's supposed to be so that you are a perfect dwelling place for God because he won't share his Ooh. temple with demons or, awesome. or Baal. Um, once he does that, then you become a vessel for Christ on the earth and he begins to move and work through you. So he Ooh. uses you. So people, I, I, I mean, I was, I feel like we've all kind of been here to, at some degree, especially as teenagers, a lot of teenagers are there, but like if, if God, if God is real or if God loves me, why does he let bad things happen to good people? You yep. know, it's, it's just, we've all said that we continue to say that. Um, yeah. But l looking at that, it's like, why is there starving children in, in Africa? If, if there's a God, why are these thing, things happening? And people will say that, like, I still get atheists who like comment on my stuff and ask me that. Yeah. And, and the, 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 the fact is, is that it's not, it's, it's God working through you, which God is working through you. Yes. Cause th there shouldn't be any, any hunger in, in Africa. There shouldn't be any hunger in America, but yeah. the, 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 the amount of food that we waste and the, the amount of food that, that we throw away from even one grocery market could feed yeah. an entire city. Yes. Um, so it's hmm. not that God did it. It's God has raised you up to be the solution to that. Why is there yes. cancer? Well, you better believe that there's healing for cancer. You better believe that everything on the earth, there, there's a way to heal it, but it's been suppressed. How wicked is that to treat a symptom and not go to the root cause and actually give the person healing and to hmm. get them on a crutch, which is capitalism that's been sold yep. to us so we just keep treating symptom 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 but not going down to the root and the thing yes. continues to fester up and it continues to bear fruit so you know just let, let, when the righteous reign when the, what happens when the righteous get a hold of that money i was watching basketball and in, in a well uh, the news anyway and a basketball player is like one guy really good dude got signed for 42 million for one year, 42 million. And I'm like, that's just one dude. Yeah. He's not even the best out there. He's making 42 million. I'm like, I feel like, like he may be able to buy himself, you know, with that money, like in world hunger. And, and it's like, well, that's not what he wants to spend his money on. You're like, you're right. Yeah. That's what my wife said. You don't want to spend his money on that. You're like, you're right. So what happens when, when a righteous person gets that money that, that has a burden mm. in their heart, who, who knows what it's like to, to, to starve. Wow. You see celebrities like Shaq. I love watching Shaq. Shaq, Shaq leaves his house every day with a pocket full of money. He's going to find a random person, a random kid to bless and just give them a find a, and I'm sure he's in tune, you know, who, who gets it, not just anybody, yeah. but who yes. can benefit from this, you know, yes. and he, he gives it to, to people or children or their gas or, taking care of those people, the, the, you know, the rapper Akon. Yes. He's a one rapper, great rapper. He's just one. He took his money and, and, and what is he? Electricity in Africa. He went and, and brought electricity to so many villages. Yeah. I think it was, or yeah, wells or that. something like one or the other, but that's one person, man. Yeah. One person yeah. with one that, that had the Ooh. resources to do that. Ooh. So, oh, man. Why, so why so why is there if, if there was a god why is there starvation in africa no 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 there's a one dude who humbled himself and gave up some of even his excess and went and gave these people power and gave these people water what happened if two people did that mm. what happened if akon and the basketball player both did that what about the whole team what if they all Probably. tithed into that and it wasn't just spent on immaculate buildings but was spent on solving world hunger Wow. That's not God. That's you. You have to be the vessel. You have to be the conduit for the ideas. The ideas that, that I told you that the birds are teaching. The bugs are teaching. Mm. Creation teaches. The sun is trying to tell you how to get free energy. The bugs get their energy in their life source for free. Water mm. out of the ground, out of the sky. Um, 
earth energy, grounding, ions, like all of the free stuff. There's, you can pull particles out of the atmosphere and create. But again, they put water, yes. water in a bottle and sell it to us, but we're crazy for thinking that we can pull yeah. water out of the atmosphere. I got a humidifier in my bathroom and I didn't know, my wife, did, my wife had to tell me, that, oh, be careful, you're gonna spill the water. I'm like, what water? She's like, yeah, it pulls the moisture out of the air and it converts it into water and there's water in the back and we've been throwing it out. And I'm like, can we drink that water? Because like, I think the stuff they're putting in our water, they're adding chemicals. Like, is this good? Is this oh, okay? yeah, for sure. It's like, for sure. well, this comes out of the atmosphere and it filters it and it creates water. I'm like, oh, I can go drink that? I can, I can drink it? Well, I want to test it first. I want to be sure about you, everything you read online. You could drink that. You could drink rainwater. Everything is free. Yeah. But we got to pay. For yeah. land. We got to pay for everything that, that God is has given us a, a cure for, a cure for hunger, a cure that you can put a seed in the ground and and something, it, it gives you something. If you give it something, it gives you something back. Give, give the bugs, and the bugs are weird, right? Give the salamanders. I bet you, I bet you Joseph Smith is connected with the salamander was more than that one time. Oh, oh yeah. I bet you he was feeding the salamanders every night and then they told him what a gold trait was. Yeah, I don't know. I'm telling you, like, this ain't no, we think of these miracles. Well, the ravens brought me food. Well, you brought the ravens food when you had more. When you're eating your bread and you're yes. coming here, here's your food. But when I'm hungry, oh, I ain't got no food. And the Lord sends the ravens, they come and they listen to you because they're your friends. Yes. Because you commanded them to do this thing to get me food and I'm friend. And you're hungry? Here you go, you took care of us. A friend in need is a friend indeed. This is what we're talking about. Reversing the curse that we've all been put under. If, if we fell out of sync with nature, with the animals, with ourselves, with our families, we're at war with these things now. And now our yards are being infected and taken over because our yards are bad. And like, I got moles and I got like mold tickets and stuff. But I'm sitting out here meditating on the sun. I'm telling you, these bugs are. They're just weird stuff, man, that bugs don't do. I'm just going to say, show up. And the mold tickets that they live in the ground and they talk and they're doing things, and I'm like, they're forming together and they're making symbols and shapes, all the bugs. It's I like, think your microphone's yeah. rubbing up against your hair, man. Maybe it was a good thing. <laughs> no, Maybe I, that no, was I, a good thing. No, no, I, no, it was actually, I think it was trying to, I think something was trying to interfere with the good things you were saying because um, it, it, was, it was powerful. And, and it's, as, as you're saying that, it's not, I can hear those birds in the backdrop and uh, it's almost as if they're trying to say something right now. I mean, because they've really been all of a sudden within the last couple of minutes. Can you hear me though? Right? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I can just hear slide. You fine. It, yeah, it was, it was like when you started talking about the birds and the insects and, and how, you know, the, the raven, it's like, that's when it started, you, the mic was hitting your hair, and that's like, that's when those birds were starting to really, were really starting to sound off, and it was like, uh, I was just kind of taking it in for a little bit, I was like, oh. Well, yeah, I was just yeah. saying they want to be your friends. Yeah, they want yeah. to be your friends, and I think that the reason they fed uh, Ezekiel is because Ezekiel fed them. I think that the reason that Jesus was able to speak to the winds and waves um, yeah. was because he, were, he was friends with it. He yeah. wasn't an enemy. So, hmm. yeah, Man. somebody said, I see you, what you said, Sky. I'm not going to go too much further in that. This kind of, this is stuff that will get you killed. I'm being straight up with you. This is what, this is the, this is what they're telling you. But we're, we're, this is where we're going. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah. is where we're going. Free, you know what I'm saying? Free energy for all. I don't need, just, I mean, it's all out there. It's for you. There's nothing. The only thing holding it back is you. You don't, if you want to, if you become a conduit, for that it'll show itself to you i didn't want to I, I mean i'm studying other things you know what i'm saying and, and it just comes because it's universal the things that give you yeah. free energy is the way you you charge free energy in your body yeah. it's the way you charge you send energy in prayer and in energy healing yeah. if you ain't got no energy in you you're not finna energy heal nobody no you ain't got no energy in you. How do you get it? Yeah. By going into the secret place yes. in the sun, in the darkness, and get impregnated 
with the spirit of the living God, that aspect of him, of it. Yes. His healing, his healing son. The son heals you. The son's, the Bible says that the sun will rise with healing in its wings. Mm -hmm. Go out for sunrise. Yeah. When the sun rise, talk to him. Hey, yeah. man, I need you to, uh, I need you, I need to carry some of your light in me because mm -hmm. my family is sick. Yes. And I need, I need your healing to flow through me. I need you to touch them right now. Will you shine upon them and heal them? Whatever. I don't know how to do it. I'm a student. Yes. But I'm learning. Mm. And I, I want to just drop these seeds so that everyone could, because they're trying to get your attention too. That's what synchronicity is. You have yes. the synchronicities in 11, 11, 333 and all these numbers, but most yeah. people are just like, cool, bro, I'm in sync. Okay, well, it's, they're trying to get your attention. Like something yeah. a lot older than you. Something very ancient, something good. You know, most of us, we only think of the, the, the ancient bad things, the ancient, the Nephilim and fallen angels. Okay. What about yeah. the risen angels? Yeah, exactly. What about the ones that want to help? Yeah. Come on. Once I mean, you start focusing on them, they, they, they will focus on you. That's awesome. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> oh, man, I love that. Um, yeah, the 11, 11, the 3, 3, the, I mean, gosh, my day is just full of that stuff. And I'm, every time I see it, I'm like, what am I missing? Like, what, what, what is it that I'm not, what I'm not catching here? Because um, I, I always, I always feel like I'm missing. I'm like, I'm like, I almost say, I even say outward, uh, out loud, sorry. I, I'm, you know, I don't, I don't catch on. I know, I know by saying I don't catch on quick. I'm already, so that's me actually making that happen. But um, yeah, I would love to get some, some greater understanding as far as when that stuff goes on. Man, it happens all the time. Yeah. So, I mean, you just know they're getting, you're trying to get your attention. Um, just, you know, try to do something, you know, and I guess I say try to do something, just get, get back into alignment because they're having to come into your realm to get your attention. Mm. But we are, okay. we are the ones, we are the ones that are supposed to travel through the realms. So we got to get yes. back into alignment so that when we do dream, when we do meditate, Ooh. when we do breathe, when we do close our eyes, we're able to receive, um, Cause they're, cause they cause they can, they can pop into our realm, but trust me, it's like, it seems a lot harder. They have to use a lot of energy to do mm. that. So, wow. but you have, yeah. you have more energy cause you, cause you, they, these spirits only have certain elements in them. Mm. Uh, they either have spirit and fire, spirit and water, spirit and mud. We have everything. We have earth, air, yes. fire, water, and breath ether the breath of god in our nostrils yes. so when we talk about energy and 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 what all we have and we have the the lightning and electricity and the intellect in our mind and we can weigh two thoughts and we can measure the animals can't mm. the animals have a program and they can't break that program yes there there is no that's just what they do they're programmed to do this and and they yeah. are animal they're here for a reason to serve and that's their ministry. The word service is ministry. Their mm. ministry to humanity is, is they serve. It's what they do, but they're friends. They're not, he said, I no longer call you servants, but I call you friends. Like you're a servant, but you're a friend. Mm. I'm not going to command you and be, yeah. you know, a slave driver. No, we're friends. Listen, because it says that a friend doesn't, uh, a servant doesn't know what his master is doing. Yes. But I now call you a friend because now I can share in and we can talk about this. The wind is not, the wind of being Jesus' servant. Listen, you're my friend. Now you bring me messages. Wow. And now I can bring you, give you messages. And I can be a conduit between the heavenly energy and the earthly energy, which is at war. Yes. And they meet here on the battlefield where we are in us, in our minds, in our hearts, on the land. Ooh. And so Ooh. we are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. I'm yes. going to make peace between what everything i'm gonna make peace between with the things that have been trying to kill me now i'm making peace with you hey man listen i see you've been trying to get my attention you want me to stop smoking i know okay i'm not doing it i'm gonna i'm gonna learn from the the symptoms that come from a deeper issue a deeper root all of this goes together any that's the beauty of the scriptures and universal truth they are it's not just for Christians. Yeah. And somebody said, you know, yes. what Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's the only one. He wasn't the only one who said that. 
he was of the way. He yeah. separated himself so that he would be a conduit for the way, the truth, and the life. For sure. And guess what? Anybody who is in Christ, truly in Christ, now you are the way, yes. the truth, and the life. Mm. And Christ lives in you. You are, he says, Christ said, I'm the light of the world. I bring light. I'm illum I am illumination. Okay. But then later when Christ is in you, now he says, you are the light of the world. Go out and be a light. Go into the darkness because when you show up, there is no more darkness. You are the light. You are the light. Well, the world is dark, not when you show up. Well, there's no mm. food in Africa, not when you show up. Mm. When, you, when you position yourself right, and I can trust you with money. I can't trust you with money yet. Yeah. I've been testing you. I've been giving you 20 here, yeah. 1,000 there, 2,000 there, and you, you blow it all. I can't trust you with money. The moment I can trust you with money, I'm going to send you wherever you need to go, and we got this. The, mm. the Bible says the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. Wow. But it's a good thing that he doesn't give it to you now because you'll become yeah. wicked because the yeah. love of money is the root of all evil. Yes. Mm, Father, I don't love money. I love you. Yes. I love you. Well, I'm going to test you. I'm going to give you a little money. See what you mm. do. And I'm going to tell you in your heart and in your mind, give that money away. Give that man yeah. $300. Well, I ain't got number 200. I don't care. Give him, give him what you got. Okay. Okay. I can trust you. This is how the Lord works. And it, we're really talking about pennies here. Yeah. But it starts yeah. there and it moves to millions. Yes. It does. God has people in every, it's the same faith. It is a now faith. Yes. Now faith that I can trust you. If I can trust you with 200, I can trust you with 2,000. If I can trust you with 2,000, I can trust you with 2 million. Yes. I can trust you. You couldn't trust mm. Judas <laughs> yeah. with the money. <laughs> no. But, and so God has this school to teach us. See if you can trust this. Most yeah, of us man. can't be or couldn't be trusted, but the moment you are tested and you pass that test, yes, and you move in, you 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 graduate and you come to another level. There's another grade. That's powerful, man. I mean, um, wow, I'm just really receiving from you here, and I thank you for I thank you for it. I just thank the Holy Spirit for making this happen. Um, I'm really receiving from you in abundance. And um, I know my soul and my spirit have said, listen, um, I know you do this thing, do this thing, but we're going to at least just work together on this and take take in because I'm um, sharing a wealth of, of really great knowledge that um, I know has been the result of, of much that you've experienced and learned. And um, I feel like I'm just really receiving from you in a powerful way. Just wanted to say thank you for it. Really You're welcome, that. man. It's, yeah, it's uh, anything good in me is 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 God, but you know, yes, it's, uh, always. we you know we, you know we 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 bring the best out of each other. You know what I'm saying? That's so right. this is a yes. This is a tennis match. You know what I'm saying? That's right. That's and, exactly uh, it. <laughs> and it wouldn't happen. You know, I got a friend of mine. He just messaged me this morning. A good friend, and he's like, brother, we had a good conversation, but. I want to interview you more because you, I feel like you're holding back. You'll like, you know how I've, I mean, I've, I've, I'm aware of it that I mentioned so many things, but then I move to the next instead of like, hold on, stay there. Let's get clear. Mm -hmm. How does this work? What is the scriptures? How does it look like? What is a practical way to do it? Right? He's like, man, I want to, I want to interview you some more. And he doesn't even have a podcast. He's just like, yeah. I want to pick your brain. Cause I think that people can benefit because the way he thinks, what he mm -hmm. has to, because he can't ask me nothing that's not inside of him. Just yes. like you, you can't identify nothing in me that's that's not inside of you. Yes. You'll call yes. it bad. Anything good is is because the good is in you. Like God has allowed you to see it because it's in you. If it isn't in you, you can't see it. Yeah. Everything is just it's outside of you, and that's that's because we're a body. We are the body. We're, we're part yes. of the same body. Yes. Come we're on. in Christ. We're in love. And it's more inclusive than we've been told. There's more people in that body. Yeah, that's good. I always think about, um, I don't know if this is the best analogy or not, but this is where my mind goes. Um, I always think about like the, um, and the transformers when they, when they come together to form the big, um, yeah. I forget the name, but, um, 
I can't help it. Every time I think about the body like that, I just think here comes that thing. And they're all like, Watch! and it's like there the big thing, and um, that's just a picture I get every time. It's yeah. about the body. Yeah, it's kind of like that in a way. Yeah, I always say the uh, what is it, Voltron? I know it is like one of the early ones. Yeah, where they all are like they were like yeah. cats or something, the cats and stuff, and they all come together and Power Rangers and Transformers for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because um, they get all this. They, I mean, a lot of those things get their inspiration from the Bible. We know this, and so that's probably <laughs> that's probably where they got it. It's like, hey, let's let's go check the Bible again because that's where we got all our stuff. The last thing we did. Uh, let's see what it has for us in this. Oh, let's come up with these things called the Transformers. Okay, um, let's call them the, the Constructor Cons, and they can be a little uh, backhoe here, and there's be a tractor here, and they come together to form this big thing. <laughs> yeah. And, it works. yeah ho- and, you know, Hollywood's teaching us so much. There's so much. I mean, it's, it, everything is a mixture, right? So yeah, it's not just one example you get, and it's all good. It just depends on what's in you that allows you to see that. Yeah, but Hollywood exactly. has so much biblical truth in it. Man, if you'll look for it, you'll see yes. it. If you're not looking for it and you don't know what to look for, you won't see it. But yeah, first of all, I mean, you, you, if you're looking for biblical truth, then you got to know the Bible. And then yeah, if you absolutely. read and, and then you watch Transformers, you're like, oh, like you just said, the body of Christ. I see the body analogy. They all come together. And now it's Captain Planet. They all come together and put yep. their rings together, and then he forms and comes down to clean the planet up, yeah, save the planet. Um, but there was that the the first movie was called The Rise of the Fallen, the uh, first Transformers movie. Yes, and and these stars come down and go to the bottom of the ocean and go into the caves and all of that kind of stuff, and the and the stars go inside of these Decepticons that are yeah. at the bottom of the oceans and things yep. and. And they're in chains. They're chained up. They've been defeated, but they've been yep. awakened for another final battle. And so mm, come on. that's straight out of the book of Enoch. Yeah, like absolutely. that's Enoch. The stars gather and they come down here on the earth and, yeah. and take bodies for themselves to come and, and do war with mankind and with the so-called angels, which would be the, the Autobots. You know, yeah, it's that story. <laughs> it's 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 our story. It's our story. You know? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's our story. That's, that I, that's that's why people who don't read the Bible can still resonate with it, yeah. Because it's in their DNA, and they're like, "Oh man, I feel it. It's it's got it's so much truth." And blah blah blah. And yeah, it's your story. Yes. It's about you being in your chains, and you that that part you, part of you are that star, is in is in you. Yeah. Like the mm. part of you that is fighting against humanity and against nature. Yeah, that's your fallen nature. We all got that. Yeah. It's kind of like, if, yeah, it's kind of like if you do the production well and you do the writing well, there's no, if that, if you're like that store is a focus, um, there's, there's little chance that it won't have some success because, um, because we're, we're, we're just watching a creative rendition of our store. And if it's done well, <laughs> Hey, we're going to go talk, we're going to see it and we're going to go talk, to, we're going to share that with other people. Hey, if somebody really did a good depiction of our story, go check it out. I think you're going to like it. I loved it. It might've been the greatest movie I've ever seen. You know, so <laughs> yep. that's Hollywood. That's, and that's the beauty of Hollywood. I, I, I love Hollywood. I lived out there for a long time. and I love media and the entertainment business. And when they get it right, which is a lot of the time, um, it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing for all the consumers to enjoy, all the audience. So, yeah, yeah I love, love that. It's awesome. Yeah, we could be so. taught. Everything becomes your teacher. Uh, it, it's, it really goes to, to say, you know, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Yeah. And um, whatever that teacher is and whatever lesson that it has, mm. the lesson um, or the teacher, it depends on what you want to learn or yeah. what is in your cards, what is, what is in your DNA. Like, what are you called to do? Like, everybody's not a prophet. Everybody's not a priest. Right. Everybody's not a, a writer. Everybody's not this, right? So you need to connect mm. with that yeah. Like if you're if, if you're called to be a scribe, you yeah. need to ask for the spirit of the scribes to show up, and they will. They were in the scriptures, and they they still are here. They're not dead. Yes. Yeah. They're, they're not dead. If they're dead, they're fought, they're demonic entities roaming yeah. the underworld, and they're not that. Trust me. No. That that come out at night. <laughs> but listen, yeah. they they are not that. The the ones that are good, the Bible calls them the ancient ones. 
And it says, yeah. ask for the ancient ways. Ask the ancient ones. Ask the elders and they will show you. Don't ask a medium, which is a, a spirit, a lower spirit, yeah. that just heard something and can yeah. repeat something else. No, it says, don't ask them. Don't ask the familiar spirits. Those aren't people. Yeah. Those are spirits themselves. But it says, ask yep. the ancient ones. The spirit yeah. of the prophets are subject unto the prophets. Moses is, yeah. is one of the heads of the order of the prophets. Francis says, just ask. Yeah, ask as a child. Yes. Ask without a preconceived notion of how it yep. comes. Yeah. It says, allow, uh, uh, I guess you're female, I'm sorry. Uh, allow, yeah, allowed, not just allow, but internally in your heart. Meditate about, on it. Think about it. When you it go to sleep, <laughs> how are they coming? Because like, guess what? Most of it's going to be in your dream. Oh, yeah. Or if, you don't, or if you don't remember your dream, as soon as you wake up, you have a new idea. Pop, 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 pop. They've been waiting for you to wake up. Yes. And when you wake up, because you're a perfect, perfect conduit for that, the spirits pass by. They yes. pass by in the yeah. stars. <laughs> and they're yeah. looking for somebody who can carry yep. that portion. Mm. The prophets are looking for the prophets to wake up. And when they find one, have you considered my servant? Have you considered this person? Like you can trust them now. Oh, you can't trust them because give them a little bit of money. He'll, he'll cuss you yeah. and die. Give them a little money. He'll show you who his allegiance was, is with. Mm. This is what, this is, you're getting principles here. Moses was over the prophets. Moses was yeah. going to die. Um, he wasn't allowed to go into the promised land. But mm. when Moses was, was uh, going to die, he was at Mount... Um, Abraham, I believe it's called Abraham. And the Lord spoke to him and said, listen, you're not going into the promised land, but come down from Abraham or Arabim, Abraham, something like that, and go down to Mount, this may be too much for y'all, but I uh, started it. Go down to Mount Nebo, go to Mount Nebo and there you will die and you will be gathered up to your people. Moses, go to your mountain. A mountain is a place where the earth touches heaven. It's a portal. Yes, yes. Go to that mountain, die there, and your people will gather you up, and you'll be there as a, as a watchman. You'll be with your people. He said, okay, and he goes there and he dies. And I'm like, okay, none of that, like Moses, that name don't mean nothing to us. Abram doesn't mean nothing to you. Nebo doesn't mean nothing to you. Why did Moses die? At the at Mount Nebo and was called to his people. So first of all, there's people at the top of the mountain, and, and he died. He went up to him. He had to die to go to him. And two, Nebo means protector or mountain of the prophets. Mm. Go back to where you came from. Mm. I'm allowing you to to ascend back up go back to the mountain and you're going to continue to teach as a prophet. Yeah. No, they won't. You can't commune with the dead. No, he's not dead. He ascended. He didn't yeah. descend into the earth. He ascended. How do you know that? Go talk to Jesus when he went up Mount Nebo. <laughs> Mount yeah. Transfiguration. Yeah. <laughs> who, who spoke to him? Moses and Elijah, two prophets. Elijah. Yeah. The spirit of the pro yeah. prophets is subject to the prophets. You got to get with the prophets. You can't go to no pastor and ask him to train you to be a prophet. He doesn't know. No. He's not woke up. He doesn't wake up at three in the morning with ideas. He doesn't uh, get, he's not an intercessor. He doesn't get, you know, awakened to go out and put his hands to the sky and ask for signs. Yeah. The, 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 the grass doesn't talk to him. The, no, people talk to him. So yes. when, when the student is ready, Come on. Amen. When a student is ready, Amen. the teacher will appear. Teachers. Mm. There's no reason for Moses to come talk to you. Not, you, don't, you don't even know who Moses is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like even if Moses came or maybe coming to you, you think it's a demon because it yeah. shows up as a ball of light or gas. Mm. But that's not Moses. That's a that's a demon because it didn't look like what I thought it was. Well, you got to let go yeah. of, again, you're, you judge something before it's a point in time. Mm. That, that mm. when it comes to like ancestors and, and the elders and, and those guys, like, I think one of our, our biggest setbacks is we think they're going to look like them. Yeah. 
Like when Moses comes to teach, he's gonna look like an old man in a robe and a staff. Yeah, exactly. Come on. <laughs> and we're like, there's Moses, and we because we, we like it says don't judge anything according to yeah. the flesh. Because mm. you're like, oh, there's Moses. You know how you're supposed to know it's Moses? His spirit. Yeah. You know how you're supposed mm. to know it's a demon because it looks ugly? No. Because of its energy. Yeah. It can't pretend to be nice, not 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 a spirit. It's it it's programmed. Yes. There's no there's nothing good in it. That's what the wicked spirits are. Hmm. Yeah, and, and you just Ain't know that it. Right, guys. My little birds. Yeah, they're, they're tripping right now saying that's right. Yeah, they're all back there eating. A, so they're getting closer to me. Usually, like this wouldn't happen. I gave them, they're eating the worms I put out. Hey, I just need you to know I gave it to you, okay? I'm the keeper of this garden. And I need y'all to bring me something for that. That wasn't free. <laughs> <laughs> bring me some feathers or some information. Right. Yes, right. <laughs> some gold. Some gold, yes, yeah. Yeah, right. man. For sure. Hey, listen, this is how my mind works. I believe the yeah, scripture. I love it. Jesus. I, I love it. Dude. I'm love open it. for anything. Blow yeah. my mind, Lord. I mean, how many yeah. like Jesus didn't have the money to pay to pay taxes. Yeah. You know where they went and got it from? Yes, the fish. <laughs> Go over there and grab one of them fish. Why? What's the fish got? It's got money in it. It's got money in its mouth. Yeah. No, it doesn't. Mm. Go see. That's the kind of faith we got to operate in. Like, yeah, that's absolutely. crazy faith. Yeah, I know. That, that, I know guys. I know people who pray and meditate and focus, and rubies fall out of the sky. Mm. I know those guys. They got. It's a science. It's energy. Yeah. They, they're forming it. They're believing it. They're yeah. asking, and and they. If you don't believe it, it's not going to happen. But the moment you your faith moves into now, yeah. like even this, this these stories of two thousand years ago or maybe longer, we bring it into now. Now faith. Now there's going to be a fish that gives me a gold coin. Now yes. there's going to be a frog that comes up with a gold coin in his mouth. That's crazy. Yes. Hey, you don't know if you, you. Hey, you ever seen what the crows bring in? The crows bring money. They got people all over TikTok showing you the crows bringing them coins. Yeah. The uh, mm. crows are bringing quarters and like the blooms from like the 1800s and stuff. They're bringing all kinds of stuff. The crows are mm. because they give the crows peanuts and trinkets and they'll trade out with them. That's not, I mean, just go to TikTok. Wow. Go to TikTok. That, that people are showing that all over TikTok. You got to give them something though. And then you got to believe yeah. it. You just mm. come expecting something. Yeah, that's right. You got to give. And then, but, and it's not even to give, to expect you give out of just, it's what we do. Yeah. It and so it doesn't, it doesn't move that I'm, you know, you give to get, but that's just law. Yeah. Whatever you put out comes back. That's your, that literally is law. It's the flow of life, the Torah. You just explained training or uh, tra trading for me in a way that I, I, I've needed to hear because I've heard it before and I've been like, I'm still not catching the wind of that. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not catching it. And what you just shared, I caught it. So, um, yeah. Thank you, you have to give, you have yeah. to give. I don't, I don't fully understand the meanings of all the gifts, but I know that you have to give. And I know yes. the greater the gift, the mm. greater the reward. Um, any, any God, any spirit, any prophet, you had to give them something. Yeah. You had to take care of them. Like the, like the priest had to be taken, taken care of in the temple because if they're gonna go and, and worship and work and commune and fight yeah. and battle on your behalf, yeah. they don't need to come down from the mountain or out of the tabernacle to go look for food in the forest. Yeah. You, while you were in the forest, you get food and bring them some. Yes. You had to, you got, it's a tie, it's called a tithe. Yeah. And, and it, it is an exchange. Uh, Abraham uh, gave Melchizedek a tithe. Yes. He tithed in the, into, into Melchizedek and Melchizedek blessed him. Most yes. people don't know yeah. that, that he was, Melchizedek wasn't the only king that showed up there. Mm. Uh, it was Melchizedek and the king of Sodom. They both came and they both wanted to bless Melchizedek. Yeah. They both wanted to anoint him and bless him. And if he would have traded into with a, with 10% with tithe as an yeah. offering to this being, 
Yeah. He would have blessed him. And Sodom was there too, the king of Sodom, the king of fire. Yeah. And he says, no, I don't, want, I don't want your blessing. He's like, give them to me and I'll, I'll give you these things too. In greater yeah. measure, faster. No, I don't want it that way because now I got to tell everybody it came from you. Now your exactly. faith, I have to erect temples in your name. Yeah. I have to, I have to do things conducive mm. to what it mm. takes to keep you in my life. Yeah. I'm not right. willing to do that. Same story happened with Jesus on uh, the mount when he went to be tempted. Satan came to him and wanted to bless him. Satan, Sodom, the king, yeah, the king of this world came to him, which is Sodom is Jerusalem. The Bible tells you that spiritually in the spirit where all those beings dwelt was in Jerusalem. It tells you that in the book of Revelation. Um, like they wanted, they wanted to bless Jesus and he could have took that blessing, but he, he didn't. Because it was it was an instant yeah. gratification. He knew that he was yep. in it for the long haul, and he didn't want to have to give glory to what it took to get that blessing. Yeah, everything cost. Mm. Everything cost. Mm. Only thing free is I say is salvation, but that that cost. Like he gave his life for that. Yeah. Mm. Like everything. So when you look, you got it. It just helps it. To, now you can value things. You yeah, take nothing for it. granted. That's not an unclean man. That's not a handicapped guy. That is a guy who's got something to share if you'll listen long yeah. enough. I remember, I remember seeing this guy at church when I was younger, like in like 2000, 2001 or whatever. And he couldn't talk right, real slow, drawn out. Arm was drawn up, yep. talk real slow. And I'm like, they're like, hey, can he come hang out with us? And I'm like, no. Nah, Oh, let's see. We're gonna go shoot basketball. He can't shoot basketball, man. Like, we're going through the mall. Like, he's slow. No, we don't want him. Like, that was my thinking. To be, I'm being honest with you. I had to learn. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, it wasn't until until he he, he come and, and hung out with us that if you listen closely enough, you had a lot of beautiful things to share and it was a very smart dude. And I, that's just the principle for everything and everyone. Like, list, don't judge him before it's a point in time. He's not some, if he's just some stupid, slow handicapped person and you say that, he is that to you. Yeah. That's not who he is, that's not his identity. But when yeah. you see him, oh, no, nah, he can't come, he can't come, he can't come, he's, he's, he's don't judge anything, because if you do, you miss the blessing in it. What did it What did it take? Buying them lunch and listening. Yeah. What does it take to come in, the, to be in the sun and get privy to any and everything that ever existed and ever will exist to connect with the sun and the earth? No, it takes time and don't yeah. judge it. There's potential there. I did that with so many people and people groups, you know, I did it with rich people. I come from the trailer park, you know, I come from nothing. And um, in my mind, rich people were only snobs. Rich people were only, they look down on the poor, you know, they, they don't, they don't never give. And for some way through programming, through television, through the, my interactions with rich people, um, they didn't want to be my friends, you know, those kind of things when you're little. And so you start forming these ideas that aren't true, but they become your truth. Yeah, and it did. wasn't until, you know, you meet somebody that shows you something different, you know, like you meet a rich person that's like, they just, they're just better people or they're just a good person. And you have to eat your words. I love eating my words. Yeah, <laughs> I love eating my words, like the words that don't serve me, you know, and I have to eat them or say never, I'll never, I'm never going to do this, or I'll never say that, or I'll never, or all these people are that, so powerful, man, to come to that awakening. Oh, Jesus said, not on bread alone, you know, he's saying to the devil, not bread alone, but, you know, but these words, so, um, yeah. we're meant to eat them anyway, so. <laughs> man, uh. So many things, you know, where is it? Old people, old people, man, sh go sit with an old person. Who you call, man, these old people are just young people in an old body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, they're still like young 
a lot of them are young. Their just body is slowed down. So if you'll yeah. go and, and listen to them and sit with them and don't judge them as being an outsider, but as an equal, and then as having something to offer, my goodness, whoever, that's the thing, the thing you call common, that you, yeah. judge, you, you, you judge before it's appointed time, old people. Done yeah. it, so I sit with a, you know, my neighbor, super cool dude. Christian loves the Lord. He's just as vigilant now and so on fire now and in his old age as he was then. And I mean, just there's so many things that we judge. What are, give me some of yours, man, because I know it's hitting home too. Yeah, I mean, golly, geez, I mean, I, I, I could go throughout a day and, <laughs> and just, and just, uh, just pinpoint them and write them out. I mean, um, I, I know one thing that I, I, I've always taken note of is just like the automatic judgments. And um, I wanted, like I told my conscience one day, hey, you know, I, I see you automatically judge. And I know that might be something from a more subconscious thing. But, and it's like the second I thought about doing that, it, it's like it bombarded me with um, wanting to, to judge people on, on this surface stuff. And I'm like, that's not what I was thinking. You know, I seem to have opened up a bit of a um, Pandora's box here. And so it bombarded me for, for ever about that and so when it started doing that i had to combat it somehow so the, the second it would try to do that i would just think the word beautiful and so i've been doing this for quite a while now so anytime it wants to give an automatic judgment i just follow up with beautiful and it's like it cancels it out that said um there's still the judgment and it's i mean anything that you anything that someone would call common there are plenty of things i'm probably still call, calling common too you know, and I just I just have a mechanism now for not letting that judgment take me down. Um, but nonetheless, whatever is somebody else calling common, you know, maybe four times out of 10, I'm still calling that common too. And I think that's the part that I was originally saying, I don't wanna have these automatic judgments because um, they're, they're not who I am, but they're, they're, um, they are a habit or a pattern of something of sorts and so um yeah i uh, just whenever we can root those out completely it will be a beautiful day for for uh, humanity <laughs> yes sir yeah yes. One, one thing yes. at a time man each one reach one, one and together yeah we'll change the world like we won't pass it down you know because a lot of this stuff we're passing down well we're that's passing down that. to our children like when you grow up in a racist household listen it's passed down it's normal oh, yeah. this is this is the normal to say that these, these words or these things or to poke fun and not even know it because it's n normal until you get yeah. into a place where, hold on, this isn't, you, families don't operate like this. You can't say that. Yeah, exactly. You can't do that. And so yeah. it ends with you as yeah, you doing something little. Yeah, I gave up my racism. I gave up my, I, my tongue was speaking evil about rich people. Yeah yes now i gave that up so guess what you know praise god my, my daughter won't have to deal with that you know yeah. she'll know rich people in her life and she'll know poor people you know that it goes both ways you know yep that's really how it works um i've been in the middle and that's how i learned like I, i've literally got poor friends who were like you know, what, where, I don't know, they have the, you know, the mental capacity or, or what it is, ailing them, alcohol addiction, whatever, yeah. but they're homeless. Yeah, yeah. And, and they're living in, you know, their uh, mom's old house that doesn't have any power. It's a broken down trailer and they just sleep in it, you know. It's, yeah. They call it home, but they're homeless and they're, they have no, not a dollar to their name. And they want it, like, they're w waiting for me to call them up and want to go sit with them and have a beer with them and just talk and just be a friend and make them laugh and make them forget about that. Um, but I also got friends who were kind of in the same situation who are millionaires, who yeah. I can call and text right now and hang out and talk. Maybe, they're, maybe they have a little bit more going, but... Um, you know, so they're not as free to just hang out or talk for a long time. But yeah. I have those friends who are millionaires and, and they're, so now you have a contrast and they're both the same. I'm going to go drink a beer with the millionaire yeah. and he's going to talk about millionaire stuff or drink a wine, glass of wine or something. I don't know, yeah. but just hang out with them. Like it's just, I'm just saying that to say that normal people and, uh, yes, you know, and I love there's a lyric, Bob, 
from Bob Marley. He said, Josh sit with the highly and he sit with the lowly, sit with yeah. the lowly and he sit with the highly. Like, I really like that. He's with the poor yeah. and with the kings. He sits with them both, you yeah. know, and that's how we're supposed to be a bridge with the poor, yes. with the kings, with the, with the insects, with the birds, with the angels, and with the devils. Make peace with the, yeah. your devils, man. Yeah, Listen, absolutely. speak yeah. peace to them. Hey, thank you for what you brought to the table, man. That's You're it. good at it. I yeah. see your purpose. Yeah. You fulfilled it. Now I'll see you later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> go do what you do. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Get out of this man and go right. there to dry places. I don't need you in my life no more, but hey, yeah. salute. Yeah. You know? Yeah, man, I love that. It's, uh, well, then you, you, keep the, you keep the power where it belongs. You keep it with yourself. That's what the power is supposed to be. Yeah, you don't and give it away. Yeah. You don't give it away then. It's like, say, no, I've got the power. I recognize it because I've got the love, too. I, you know, I've got the power, but I've also got the power of love. And me, and so I recognize it, but, uh, you know, there's nothing left for us. So I got to I gotta go. So... <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's friendships. Yeah, that's, that's friendships, friendships sometimes. Yeah. And that was friendships with demons. <laughs> friendships right. with alcohol, you know, friendships with yes, yeah. Come on, man. Abusive, because yeah. it's an abusive relationship, you know. Come on, man. That's, I've never heard it put that way. But golly, that is exactly what it is. Um, yeah, you know those roads so well, and uh, that's what it is. It's an abusive relationship. And it's a reflection of the abusive relationship that you have with yourself. Um, it's something I certainly found out um the hard way and um yeah it goes back to that way you're up how you were brought up and the conditions and the environment and you know the situations and all that cumulus effect of that that eventually does add up and uh it takes a while when you finally get right or when you finally kind of get some understanding about yourself enough to where you can go to the next thing and and, uh, precept upon precept um then finally you can eventually get to where you know, I'm having this conversation with, with yourself here, and um, that's a blessing because um, you think back then, wow, nothing's ever going to change. And it's like when you just stay with change, change will eventually take you to where it is that it wants to have, where it wants you to be. Um, but to have the faith in that it's going to do that um, is that precept upon precept, and you've got to just really begin to love the journey, and I eventually just started loving the journey. Because I loved, I, I, I loved the breakthrough moments. They, they didn't come soon enough, but when they did come, it was like, boom, love that. Oh, it was hard, but this is so sweet now. And I know it's going to, I know more is coming. But God said, it's not always going to be like this, but I got to use this refiner's fire with you because I have, I have a purpose for you. There's a reason that, you know, I've kept you from not dying all those different times. You probably should have died. I, not, somebody else may, may have. But I, here, I've got bigger things for you. I want, I need you to do it. So um, I'm going to keep you alive because I believe I see what you're going. I see what you're going to be, and you're going to make. You're going to be that because that's. I always, you know, I always get what I want. <laughs> basically, and he does too. So yeah, man. Yeah. It's amazing. So true. So good. Thanks to everybody for hanging out with us live and uh, everybody who's That's listening to this on the replay. Got a lot yeah. of people listen on the replay and stuff too. So for sure, man, if people want to uh, watch you play and all that, all that stuff, man, and, and follow your work, where can they go check you out at? Yeah. So they can go to, um, well, this, my Facebook is David Delmar underscore, um, but the joy sound.com they can go to, and uh, I've got all the links for socials and, uh, social media and whatnot, so you can just kind of link away and follow where everything connects. But thejoysound.com, yeah, thejoysound.com, yeah, that's it. Yep, yes, awesome, yeah, man. awesome, yeah. Maybe when I'm not, maybe we can collab when I'm not as shy on, on this yeah. thing. I'm still, I it's still like I'm still getting over hearing myself, you know, yeah, sing and I sing with with <laughs> auto tune, but uh, yeah. to sing without it. You know, if that ever, if that ever happens, I'm sure it will. But it will. Yeah, appreciate you doing it what will. you're doing, man, and, and know Thanks, that it's man. vulnerability. That's it. Whatever yeah, that's it is that you're ashamed of, that you're condemned over, like face that, embrace that, feel it. Yeah. Exactly. But it's a lie because in Christ, 
There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There's the, the key. Right. The key is vulnerability, vulnerability, like yeah. to, to be vulnerable with people and to show them what it's like and that you can do it. And it's OK to not have everything, ha have everything figured out. It's not OK to I mean, it, it is OK to not be in, a know it all. It's OK right. to, to love your enemies. It's OK to make peace. It's OK to be weird. Like it's a, right. all of that is okay, and uh, and you, and you can show them better than you can tell them. So showing them yeah. what it what it looks like is, I think, is how we progress, and that's what I've done, and been open and honest about all the weird stuff, you know, so yes. that other people when they go through it, they say, oh, I thought I was the only one. That's right. Yeah, I thought, I thought I was, I was the, the only, only one. one going through that, you know, or who believed that? Yeah. Wow, it's great you see that because church never told me or. Nah. TV never told me or whatever. No. Nope. So. And they never will. Most, well, I don't want to say that. And they're not likely <laughs> to until a big radical shift happens and is all of a sudden that comes, the, that's the main rhetoric. And uh, I have a faith and a belief that's going to happen um, soon enough. So. <laughs> exactly. Like when that could not, there's probably not even the, when your consciousness evolves to that state, you're re ready to receive it. You don't need to receive it yet. When you're ready, it has no. It has to come before you. Yeah. This is this is the design. You don't have to look and beg. It it comes as you're able to receive it. Yeah. That's absolutely. how this thing works. It's 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 water, that is in the Bible says uh, uh we have tr we hold treasures within earthen vessel vessels pottery. We are the yes. he is the potter. We are the clay that's mold. Well, that carries something that holds water. And, yes. and oil and, and 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 wine and a lot of other things that it that it holds and when you when you're able to hold it it's going to come to you yes that's a that's a law that is not yep. that's not an opinion no. and and god is looking for for people to to carry yes. his heart his heart that's Ooh. what the i mean that was the whole Ooh. idea of the ark of the covenant y'all yep. have to carry god's presence hold his mysteries carry his secrets and not anybody could hold them there's only people who are able to stand in that energy. Yeah. People who have Ooh, elevated themselves to even touch the ark because they know that they can't put their own two cents on it, right? They hold yeah. it with, with honor and wow. and respect. So um nice nugget to end with man. <laughs> it's awesome. Well, brother, it, enjoyed man. it, man. Thank you, brother. Me too. Thank you so much. Real joy. And we'll do it again. I'll I'll get your links uh, shared in the the uh, d description and all that stuff. Cool. Uh, the proper links where to go. Just remind me. Send me that yeah. message and I'll put them put them on there uh, when we're done. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you much. Enjoy enjoy connecting with you. I'm excited to see where you go with that with the music and and ha and helping thank people you. get out of their shell. Yeah, thank you, man. I love the way you put I love the way you put words together. Thank you for that, man. Absolutely. That's what I do. I'm a rapper. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I get it. Yeah, you're good too, man. Good at it. Okay. Love you, brother. Yeah. We'll do it again, Love man. You, Sounds good. Awesome. It's good. It's good to have you on my team. Yeah. We're on the same hey, team. It's great. Yeah, it's good to be yeah. on your team. Yeah, vice, vice versa. There it is. Yeah, man. Love it. Shalom, brethren. Shalom. Shalom. Peace. Peace. David Delmar. Coats, ladies and gentlemen, go follow him. Um, check out his his music, like really cool. And he gave me a shot. He gave me a chance um, years ago. And look what happened when he gave me a chance. Look what happened when he gave me a chance. Went on his his show, Superpower Experts, talking about music and superpowers and stuff and all that. And he gave me a chance and had me on there. And it worked out, the impact that it had on his life. I didn't know that. Thank you for telling me, brother. So good. So good. Hey, Janie, Jessica, trip, trip, trip. Link, please. We will put the link in the description. But if you, if you go to his Facebook, too, so it's David Delmar Coates. It's already linked, but I will, um, I will put the links um, when, when, when we're done. Vulnerability and, and being vulnerable. and. It's okay to, they're gonna, they're gonna laugh at you, you know, cool. 
Awesome, because laughter is a medicine. They, they, they get healed when they laugh. They, they, maybe they need to laugh. <sighs> laughter is a medicine. Let them laugh. Because when they're laughing at you, they're not laughing at themselves. And that, you're a healer by being a comedian, by helping them put the focus elsewhere. So. My little birds, I think they're trying to, we got some stuff on the window, some, we got some, uh, oh my God, hey, we got some of the little see-through things on the window where they come to the window and it's a reflective glass and they're starting to go over there and peck on the window when they want some food and they'll go and chirp by the window until we bring the food out. I'm going to have to go bring him some food. He's over there chirping. It's getting in a relationship with him. Give him something. And not always to get, but trust me, when you need something, you got it. That's how it is with me. Like, obviously, yeah, I've tried to, you know, you're not, not a respecter of persons, but when, when a friend needs something, you want to show up, especially somebody who is a friend who's been showing up for you. Like, doesn't that suck when there's a one-sided relationship where you show up for people, but they won't show up for you? So that's off top. People that support me, people that like are in my circle and they buy my books and they listen to my music and they share it. Listen, they put out a book. Oh, I'm, fin I'm the first one to buy it. It's off top. I'm buying your book. Why? You bought mine. I had, you know, we tested that one time. There was a dude uh, we did in the, in the rap scene. He was messaging everybody. We did a show with him. I just kind of knew him in passing. We did a show together or whatever. Kind of got to know him, but um, he was always messaging me and all of my friends to buy his new album, the pre-order. When the buy the pre-order, trying to sell as many as he can. He, he can, and when you do music like that's the best, the, the most majority of money that you'll get is in the pre-order. So you push that. So he was pushing his pre-order, and he's like, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna buy it and or whatever. He's like, hey, you ain't bought it yet. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get it, man. It's like, you just gotta buy mine when it comes out, okay? He's like, all right. And so I bought his album, his pre-order. And I, I think I shared it out and all that stuff. But then when it's time for mine to come out, he didn't, I made sure I sent him a message. Like, hey, why don't you buy mine? And he like, just ignored it. He's seen it, but ignored it. I think I messaged him two or three times just to see. Like, okay, I bought yours and you said you was gonna buy mine, but now mine's out and you won't buy it kind of thing. You know, so it's just with the idea of, you know, having, you don't, you don't do to get, but when you got people that are supposed to be in your corner, I need people I can lean on. You know what I'm saying? That's why it is what it is with friends. But went to a Christian rap concert early on when I uh, did Christian rap in Louisiana. Um, we had a show out there. This was, man, what year was this? Probably 2007? And went to Louisiana and New Orleans and did a concert, and a bunch of big-name Christian rappers were out there. And um, I had my booth set up and it was next to theirs. And I had my little CDs and they had theirs. And I, uh, one of the kids, this lady, she was a rapper, her kids were there, little toddlers. And they wanted a CD, they were begging for a CD. And uh, I think I gave them one for free. Or she asked me or something, right? I gave them a CD. And then the kid took it and was dancing with it, showing off, showing it off to all the other kids. Like, look what I got. Y'all don't have it. And I was like, oh, man, that kind of sucks. And it was just causing a stir with the mom, who was the rapper. And she comes up to me and um, asked me if I can give all of her kids a CD. And I was like, sure. So I gave the rest of the kids CD, like three other CDs I gave out. And... Uh, I went to her table after they performed. Hey, me, y'all had a great show. Can I get one of your CDs? Yeah, $10. I was like, okay. And you don't give with your right, with your left, knowing that you're going to receive, right? But it's one of them things, it's like, what's good for you is good for me. Like, I gave your children my CDs for free, but I got to pay for yours, you know? It's just, there's a lot of lessons in that. One of the biggest ones is not to assume that people are going to operate on the same ethics and code of conduct that you do. 
that's one of the biggest things that you set yourself up for failure is thinking that the same amount that you care or even how you care, how you show it. To think that everybody is going to do the same, show that same way. Mm -mm. You set, you're you setting yourself up for failure because you, you're assuming, you're judging somebody before it's a point in time. Let them, don't just assume how they're going to treat you. Let, let them treat you and then judge. It goes with everything we've been talking about. Don't judge anything before it's a point in time, not even on a bad thing, but even judging, thinking that they're going to do something good for you. Just because you'll do something good for them, they're not thinking twice about you. Just is what it is. It's, it sucks to say that because you want people in your corner that you can trust. You want to know that, you know, if I show you love and gratitude and give you money or whatever, you'll do the same for me when I'm in need. The friends who do that, I think, go a long way. You need people in your corner that's going to answer the phone when you're going through something, you know? That's going to let you be you and not judge you. You can tell them the weird stuff that you go through. You need those people. You know, I'm, uh, again, I remember like when I was going through my awakening, you know, back, whatever that means, right? Just levels of spiritual awakening or conscious of, consciously evolving whatever truth from a Christian perspective like it was like a lot of stuff that would get you in trouble in the church that we're talking about openly now I wasn't at first but I chose to and it come back to bless me um, but I had friends who I'd get on the phone and I just knew that man when they find out that I believe this I'm done I'm done when they find out that I don't believe that Satan is Lucifer or whatever in the Bible. You know, these little just doctrine things that they've told us or that Satan was um, the angel, the, the, the great, the good, the cherub that guarded over the, the Garden of Eden at one of the gates like Ezekiel 28, right? Just little things that indoctrinally you don't question or little, you know, it ties in that Satan was the worship leader in heaven. These little things that they tell us in church, but they're not. There's no proof. There's like no biblical. And I would question that and I'd get a new understanding and it would change everything for me. You know, just the ability to tap into something that I thought I thought I had figured out. And I'd tell my friend and he he wouldn't get angry. Oh, that that's cool. I'll talk to my dad about it. You know, maybe we'll I can see why you believe that. I don't oh no, dude, I don't believe that, but that's cool, like you do. Like I don't care. And he remained a friend. And I could tell him anything. And, that, and it was a young guy. And it was uh, little things like that that went and go a long way. So now because I know that goes a long way, now I want to do that for others. You know, friends we know that got character defects or going through hard times and rough times, you know. Just the, the simple things of just being a friend for people and not judge anything before it's appointed time. Because it's funny, a lot of the things that we are, uh, you know, we did get judged about back then, or people would say, stay away from truth seeker or whatever. Now they're teaching it from the pulpits. It's not a case of the I told you so, because we're, that, that, I don't want that reward. Um, the, the reward is the conscious evolution that this is now the new normal, and we were ahead. That's what prophets do. It's what seers do. They see from another perspective. And so to get mad that the people aren't listening, who are you telling? Who are you discussing? You're discussing with a pastor who's just there to shepherd and, and oversee a congregation of people and maintain a flock. You're telling them about the spirit. Right? They don't know nothing about that. It doesn't have anything to do with the price of rice in China for them. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't mean they don't have that, that language to speak. They don't have a grid for it. But 
the fivefold ministry is supposed to work together. You're supposed to have a prophet, preacher, teacher, evangelist, priest to raise up others, sons and daughters under them. When a priest, a preacher tries to raise up a prophet, most of the time it ain't good. Most of the time. It ain't good. Because the things you're, you're seeing, the things you're experiencing, it is, it is foreign. You're, you're speaking another language. You're like a madman to them. They have no idea what you're talking about. So that's a big, big, big deal. So for those of you who are in places and trying to be accepted by people who have no idea what you're talking about, it doesn't usually end good. Find your crowd, find your audience. The people who come and, and make fun of you, whether you go live and talk about this stuff or you make a post or you go to your job or whatever, that's what they do. They're doing that anyway. They're making fun of you anyway. That's the cool thing. They're, they're, that's, they make fun of people. They just, unless you're just like them. So don't take it personal. It's not personal. The four agreements. Don't take anything personal. It's not about you. That's just what they do. But the moment you find the people that resonate with what you got to bring, come on, you find your tribe, you find your family. And you got to find them. Your vibe attracts your tribe, the weirdos. But you shouldn't just be in a tribe of people just like you either. You should be able to maintain and balance and hold your peace and hold your tongue and not have to always make it weird. That's wisdom. You want to go to the next levels? Learn to govern your weirdness at times. Most can't. They still have that combative spirit. They still have that need to be right, that need to be accepted. And this, this whole thing is about being a governor, being a judge. Um, honey says, what if there's an entity that's good inside of you? Yeah, it should be. It should be the Holy Spirit. It should be the Spirit of Christ. He doesn't come by itself. You should have good entities in you and around you and upon you and ab above you and below you. When you got, you know, you got wicked ones, bad ones, that's when you got something to worry about. What's up, James? What is my thoughts on fasting? Fasting is really good. It's to get your body in, into tune to be able to receive and deal with these energies. You're breathing. When you, you can't do breath work with no full stomach. And especially most of us get into this place where we keep food in our stomach and then your energy is, is spent, the energy of your, of your machine is spent processing and breaking down food. Even when you go to sleep, the, the things that it takes for your body and your mind and your liver and everything to process the energy that's unconscious while you're asleep to heal, it's not doing that because it's processing food because you ate at seven o'clock, eight o'clock. And when you lay your head on your, your bed, you got a, a a full stomach and your body's processing that food. So we're moving from fasting to moving to a fasted lifestyle. And then the fasting gets a little, then, then I think you're able to see fasting in, in a different light when, when your lifestyle becomes less of that of excess and you, need, you don't need as much to, to operate. And the more you have, the heavier you, you are spiritually and your body's not operating. So fasting's good. Like fasting is to pour out your soul to get all the, the excess stagnant 
air, breath out of you. Bad breath, bad breathing. Powerful, powerful. The, the, the stagnant energy. Um, fast, I'm looking into fasting, speaking. I think that was something in the scripture. It's something I can do, right? I do talk a lot. Um, I'm finding it to be a problem on some of these streams. I'm going to probably be doing less and less streams and just do more presentations and stuff versus just conversations because I do find myself having a lot to say. But people bring it out of me, though, you know, so I do enjoy that. And most people don't care, but a lot of times the audience does. And I don't want them to, I don't want to seem rude. And I know it does. So I have been looking into that. But I, I do, I am reading some stuff in the scripture about part of the fasting was putting ash on your mouth. There, I think there's a, I think there's more to sackcloth and ashes than we've been told. We've been told that they just sit in a burlap bag with ashes on their forehead, you know. That, that the sackcloth was a skirt, was a kilt. And you could sit on the ground, use your imagination. And the ashes, they would put ashes over their mouth and they pray with their heart. Abraham did that to Sarah. Abraham covered her mouth and he said she thought she he thought she was drunk, but she was able to able to hear her and she was praying with her heart, with her mouth covered. So I think that there's more to it than what we've been shown. They trick us with images. They show us a Catholic with a cross, uh, ash, ash Wednesday, ash on your forehead. Ah. Now put ash on your mouth, man, and sit in silence in, in the sun and get wisdom. That's what the scripture says Abraham did. He sat in a tabernacle, a pyramid, made out of pine, the reason you see the Anunnaki and all the gods with the pine cone. Only the trick is, oh, that's not Bible. That's not Bible. Yes, it is. It is. When you look up those words and what they mean, oh, it is. Amen and amen. That's what I'm talking about. Good job. Good job. Yeah, and so David danced naked, barefoot. It wasn't just, I like to dance barefoot. Listen, David liked to dance naked. And they said, oh, you're mad, you're drunk. He said, no, 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 but guess what? And this is what I'm telling y'all, guess what? I'm gonna become even more undignified than this. We used to sing it in church. David, David Crowder, undignified. Free me to dance undignified. David Delmar Coach, a while ago, we're talking about singing undignified. I'm gonna be more undignified than this. A guy can't hold, hold a, toot, a tune. This is make a joyful noise. Sing a new song. David was dancing for a woman. Well, you know what? You dance for God. Dancing is an act of worship. Dancing, dancing and singing is an act of worship. Clapping is an act of worship. People dance for women every, every, every night in the clubs. Dance for a God and see what happens. Let the sun come up and dance in the sunlight as soon as it hits you. Start dancing. Watch what happens. You never know if you try, but I'm going to be a little bit more undignified than this. You never know. Movement is healing for sure. We need to move. My God. 
Ignore Stephen Shelton's stupid comment. I love your hair. Let's see what he's doing. So you need to cut that hair and get it looking better for Jesus. Yeah, if I shave it, I'll be just like everybody else. High and tight, Caesar fade. I call it Caesar fade for a reason. Cause there ain't no dang Nazarene fade. Caesar got y'all faded. Is there a bug in my hair? Is that a bug? No, probably, huh? Got bugs in his hair. I keep hearing them fly by my head. I love it and God loves it. Solomon has seven locks. Solomon has seven locks. Samson had long hair. They, they recognize that their power was connected to their hair, just as an antenna. And not just the hair on their head, but the hair on their arms and the hair on the back of their neck. Why? Because you're a channeler. Thank you, Casey. I love my hair. Any more questions before I go? Your hair rocks. I just came across the whole losing your energy when you cut it. Oh my God, losing your energy. I was just gonna say that about Samson. I read my mind, oh well, yeah. I felt that for sure for months because I grew it out the first time in 2017 and then I cut it again. And I felt I got depressed for several months after I cut it. It was a big deal. I'm not young. I'm an old soul. I think I'm, okay. Source energy to live in God. Yeah, same thing. All is God. Hero Israel, the Lord is divided. Hero Israel, the Lord is divided. No. Hero Israel, the Lord is one. Even Paul continues to reiterate that. Some say that they are of, of Apollos or of Paul or of Peter. He said, no, is Christ divided? No, oh, we are one. God is not divided. You are divided. Your vision is divided. Your vision is blurred. You see men as trees, not as they are. But when you see people as a mirror through a glass, come on, then you see yourself especially the things that you don't like about people or the things you like. We focus on the easier thing was what we don't like. And we see that as a mirror, but look at somebody, the things you like and you want that for yourself and you see them doing it. That'll give you the energy and the, the faith to know that it can be done for sure. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and jump off of here. Um, yeah, make sure you, uh, if you guys like this and wanna donate or support, check out my Patreon for sure. Cause like I, I do have a lot of things available there and our personal uh, hangout sessions that we do on Zoom, uh, Sundays and Thursdays, if you wanna be a part of that. It's a small group of people. It's not a lot of people 
but we hang out and talk and pray and Adam is there. Adam Starseed Bay is there. He's in the comment section. He's usually there on Thursday nights anyway. Do you believe a psychic who reads your past lives or your future is claiming to be a Christian is against God? Uh, I mean, not necessarily. I don't know. I think it de depends on the person. It depends on the person. I don't. And you got to again, that's the thing. So those are just kind of like, to me, they're labels. Like you may have something a little bit more specific in mind. Depends on what they tell you. Depends on what they tell you. So many psychics are what we would call seers or prophets that weren't accepted by the church and, and their abilities weren't harnessed because they got discipled by a street preacher and not a prophet. So they weren't able to affirm that gift that's within you. They couldn't see it. Christ could see it. He was a prophet. He was a seer. You call him a psychic if he was walking around now because his people are tapping into it and you're already calling them psychics. Christians are doing it. You're just a psychic, someone who deals with the, with, with the psyche, with the mind, with the subtle energy that's around a person that comes from their brain or what they're doing. You can pick up on that. You can feel it. So... I haven't, Casey says, I haven't told my church about my seer gifts from God because people are small minded and they judge you. That's good. You got to protect your, um, your gift. Look what happened to Joseph when he told his brothers about his, his visions, which were truth and which came to pass and we're going to, it wasn't, it killed him. But maybe that's a process that a lot of us have to go to go, go through. It's part of the initiation. It's part of the being reborn. You have to lay down like your gift. You got to lay it down on the altar. It has to be made fun of. It has to be tried by fire. You may have to abandon it only for it to come back to you. So it's kind of part of it. It's when you own it. Like, what does it take for you to own it? You know? And I do think that you know, it takes less and less. The more we're open and more information, the more people you have that don't have to crucify you because of your gift, because they can honor it and pay to get you classes. Like, come on, like really take you under their wing. Um, then, then you can flourish and go beyond that person and take it to the next level. It is a mantle. It is what Elisha did with the mantle, the anointing of Elijah. When, he, when Elijah went into the heavens and the chariots came and got him, he dropped his mantle, his clothing, his outer cloak, and Elisha put it on, and it was a double portion, meaning I'm going to take it to the next level. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to evolve this. I'm going to be a good steward with everything you left behind for me. So we should be in the order of them prophets, if you're a prophet, I know most of you are to a degree, for sure. You're a priest, a prophet, a seer. To be faithful with it is to take it to the next level. And Jesus give, gives you a lot of parables on having a gift and using it the right way. Or if not, it being taken away from you and give in your portion, be given to someone else Who would, who will respect it and take it to the next level? With that, again, please, guys, I enjoyed it. I know I've been on for a while, but 
I ain't telling you nothing I haven't told myself. Or something that hasn't worked for me. So if you find yourself in the rut, if you find yourself asking those questions or wanting to get to the next level, it could be some of that stuff I said. Mm -hmm. Not, but if it something is shifting, or it'll come back and you'll be reminded of it later. You'll try it. Walk barefoot. Don't care what people say. I went, we went, me and my wife went and walked to the uh, park the other day and I, t I walked barefoot. I'm already got my shirt off walking. I already got my dreadlocks out walking. Barefoot, shirt off, dreadlocks walking at the park. I'm like, is this okay? She's like, what? Like, other than your shirt off and the dreadlocks? Like, no, it's like, just, okay. I just want to make sure it's not inappropriate. You look weird, whatever. Yeah, because you're the only one doing it. So you're going to look weird. You go to a, 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 a square party and you're a circle. You stand out. You're not a square. But what, what, what's the cost of looking silly to get your energy back? To have a good night's rest because you're grounded. Because you're breathing is, is proper. You're getting your soul, part of the fasting, mentioned in fasting, is to get, your, get the soul out of you and get the spirit in you, pouring out your soul. Look that, word, look that term up. So are you drunk? Yes, Abraham asked Sarah, was you, uh, Hannah, I'm sorry, Eli. Maybe. May have the names messed up. Eli. I think it's Eli and Hannah. She says, are you drunk? She says, no, I'm just pouring out my soul before the Lord. Well, you look drunk. What, what are you going to be doing? Like, what is that you look drunk or whatever they were doing on, in the book of Acts when they received the Holy Spirit, folks thought they was drunk. They were literally pouring out their soul and being reborn. Baptism of the Holy Spirit. Be being filled without measure, continually. Love y'all. Jessica says, I was just called weird yesterday. Thanks, internet, LOL. I'll continue to be weird. I keep saying it. I got a shirt available on my website. I don't really promote them that much, but they, I just made it. But it's, it says weird, and it's the, the definition of weird. The definite weird in, in the Webster's Dictionary and all the dictionaries, the word means something supernatural or uncanny. Watch out for Jessica. She's weird. Don't get true secret to pray for you. He's weird. Yeah, I am. Supernatural, uncanny, strange. I'm a stranger in your land. Abraham said he was a stranger too. He wasn't lying. Shalom, everybody. Do it again. Enjoyed it.